the National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from the Kingdome, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Seattle Seahawks. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Yugo. Everybody needs a Yugo sometime. And by Merrill Lynch. Your world knows no boundaries. A sellout crowd over 64,000 at the Kingdome this afternoon, looking at two teams trying to rebound from disappointing seasons in 1985. And this afternoon, we'll be seeing two head coaches that share more than just a first name, Noel and Knox in the top five among active coaches in the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers have won the toss, so Seattle will kick off. The kicker will be Norm Johnson for the Seahawks. Where's number nine? There's Johnson in the Seahawk huddle. Deep for the Steelers. Donnie Elder wears number 37. Last year, the Steelers 7 and 9, the Seahawks 8 and 8. And both squads disappointed with their seasons in 85 and hoping for better things as they open the 1986 season. Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe from the Kingdom ready to get the NFL season underway. Johnson's ready. Here comes the boot. Elder at the one. Finds a little seam, brings it up to about the 18-yard line. 16-yard return for Elder. And the Steelers will go on offense to begin the game with quarterback Mark Malone. Here's the offensive backs and receivers for Pittsburgh. They have two of the most explosive receivers in the game. Stallworth and Lips led the AFC 137 receptions between them last year. And Mike Webster, not the starting center, missing the first game of his career. Turk Benning and Rasmussen starting their first game. High formation in the backfield. Abercrombie is the tailback. Lips in motion. Abercrombie hit and stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Butler, who is the second leading tackler last year, coming right up to make the stop. Here's the Seattle defense. Excellent front three. Jacob Green tied for second all time in NFL sacks with 46. The linebackers, Butler, Seattle's all time leading tackler. And in the secondary, easily has been to four straight Pro Bowls. Brown, the second leading interceptor among active players. Second 11, a loss of a yard on the first play. To Pollard tries to get outside to the 25 and taken out of bounds at the 26 yard line by Kenny Easley and Eugene Robinson. And Tom Pittsburgh knows if they're to win today or even be in this game, they have got to run the ball. And with the missing lineman that they have in there, the makeshift offensive line, a lot of different changes that we'll talk about during the game. It's going to be hard for them, but Pollard really came out with a great run to start this first quarter off. He got the corner for a gain of 10. It'll be third and one for Pittsburgh. Ball resting on the Steeler 27 yard line. First important third down play of this game. This is the first possession. We played a little less than a minute. Abercrombie hit, gets away from one man, takes it up to the 29, close to the first down. Dave Brown from his corner spot made the stop, and it'll be close. It will be a first down for Pittsburgh, a gain of two on the play. And, Tom, we really expect to see a lot of linebackers shooting through. That time, Bruce Schultz shot through and almost got him in the backfield. The other linebackers, Butler and Young, are just, they are all the time at the ball. Wherever the ball is, that's where they are. They're a very, very active group of linebackers. First and 10 for the Steelers from their own 29-yard line. Brings it to the 30-yard line, just a yard gain on the play. Easily from a strong safety, Butler, the inside linebacker, combining on the stop. Well, you'll, you'll see on this play that Abercrombie's trying to get outside. Now, watch the linebacker play. There's Butler, number 53. Now, watch how quickly he reads his slow draw, 
gets back in there, but now Butler, oh, Abercrombie just puts that shoulder down. He is a load in there at over 215 pounds. There is Abercrombie, who missed two and a half weeks of the preseason with a septic meningitis. He's all right now, though. Second and nine for the Steelers. They have yet to put the ball in the air. Malone perhaps checking off. Fumble. He picked it up and completes the pass to Stallworth. Gain of six on the play. Dave Brown made the stop. And that is probably the hardest thing for a quarterback to do. When he drops that ball, to have the foresight to look down. Now watch, you'll see he drops the ball off the snap. He reaches down, has the foresight to get calmness, and then picks up in the, in the flat, he picks up his wide receiver. That takes a lot of experience because that's a panicky situation. And when you drop that ball, everything goes wrong. Ouija Thompson enters the game for the Steelers. Hughes and Ehrenberg, the running backs now. Low set back behind Malone on third and three. Lips in motion. Malone will go to the air. Incomplete pass, flags on the play. Looked like the hit might have been a little too soon. Could be pass interference. I think it was pass interference. The interesting thing is I thought the ball got tipped coming off the quarterback's hands because the defensive back tried to time it, and when he tried to time it, the ball was just floating out there. It wasn't a hard strike delivered. Pass interference, number 22, defense, first down. Jerry Seaman making the call on Dave Brown. Here it is. Now watch this ball, right? It just kind of floats out there. It's not, see the spiral of the ball is kind of twisting around? And a defensive back is timing it coming off the line, and he just got there too fast. That's, that's Dave Brown, I believe. Dave Brown called for the interference. Nobody tipped it. It was just a floater off the hand of Malone. But nevertheless, the Steelers put it in play with a first down at their own 48. Abercrombie, midfield, and stopped. Keith Butler again on the tackle for the Seahawks. Gain of two or three on the play. There's Fred Young, who has made the Pro Bowl twice as a special teams player, assisting on the tackle. And we're going to be watching today a lot, Tom, the center play of Dan Turk, number 51, who's filling in for the legendary, I guess you'd call him, Mike Webster, who's back in Pittsburgh watching this game. Webster with an elbow injury, missing the first game of his career. As Chuck Knox surveys the scene from the Seattle sideline, Pittsburgh with a second and eight from midfield. Malone, complete close to the first down, John Stallworth again. Dave Brown having his problems covering the great John Stallworth. Seven-yard gain. It'll be shy of the first down by about a yard. And one thing that Stallworth does is he runs his pattern so well. He's up there in the years. He's, we know that he's played 13 years and it's been a just perennial all-pro each year. But watch how quickly he turns his pattern. Quickly, quick out. You don't even see Dave Brown in the picture until the latter part of the play. But that's the thing that Stallworth has relied on so long is those great run patterns, very precise. He only needs one more reception today to move into 23rd place all time in NFL receiving. Third and one for the Steelers. Abercrombie, the lone setback. Malone on the sneak, and he didn't get much. Well, I have never agreed with that play on a third down and one. You've got a 215, 20-pound fullback standing back there, and the quarterback is standing flat-footed. And when he gets the ball, he has to almost put a foot back to get, get a start. And if they jam the center, there's just no place for him to go. Fortunately, they needed only about six inches. They may have gotten it, but it's still going to be very, very close. As they unstack the players, we'll ask you, what would you do in that situation? Give it to Abercrombie? Absolutely. I'd, I'd give it to my running back, the power running back. He's got a he's got a four-yard start. He can pick the hole. He's got a little bit of vision. He's sitting back there and can kind of pick a little seam. I just, I just don't agree with that play. There's the measurement, and it's short. Now he's over here saying to the bench, we want to, we want to go for it, coach. Decision time for Chuck Knoll early in the game. 10-31 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Pittsburgh with a drive off the opening kickoff. They're going to go for it. And I bet you they don't try a quarterback sneak again. <laughs> that famous King Dome crowd, the loudest perhaps in the NFL, exhorting the defense to hold on just a few inches. Fourth down. Malone again, and this time he has it. Well, I called that one wrong, didn't I? <laughs> well, maybe that's their play on short yardage. But they got a better surge this time. See, he came on a quick count. And now, see, quickly got up there. Now, see, he put the foot back. 
He got a good surge there. Dan Turk, 51, got an excellent block in there on Joe Nash. And Terry Long and Randy Rasmussen also giving Malone enough yardage for the first down, and the Steeler drive stays alive down to the 42 of Seattle. First down, Pittsburgh. Malone started out with four straight running plays, but since that time, they've had a pretty good mix. Potter and Abercrombie, the splitbacks. Malone lets it fly deep. Lips can't get it. Kenny Easley, step for step, right there with him. Well, a new innovation for NBC Sports this football season, the 10-minute ticker. Every 10 minutes, we'll bring you up to date on all the other scores around the National Football League. The defending Super Bowl champion Bears airing it out at first, and Cleveland coming right back to make it a ball game. Houston, an important game for the Steeler fans, a big win over Green Bay. That's our 10-minute ticker. Every 10 minutes, we'll bring you all the latest scores. The 11th play of the Pittsburgh Drive, second and 10. Pound straight ahead, draws a crowd of blue-shirted Seahawk defenders, but still manages to gain five yards on the play before Randy Edwards hauls him down. And Tom, it almost feels as if I'm down there playing for Seattle. I played for Oakland against this Pittsburgh team for years, and they do the same things year after year. Quick traps in the middle, quick folds. Of course, this year they've got different linemen in there, but they're still, their offensive velocity is still the same thing. Quick hitters up the middle, short plays. They just drive the ball on you. David Hughes and Rich Ehrenberg in for third and five. Malone under pressure. Lips curled in. The pass went out. Incomplete. Terry Taylor right with Lips on the play. It brings up fourth and five. Malone leaves the field. Did a pretty good job of engineering that opening drive, though. He certainly did. He chose his plays well. That's what he has to do. You know, one of the interesting things about him is that they said he became a leader on this team when he fought back from knee surgery, and he has to be a leader today. He has to choose his plays well. Harry Newsom, the punter. Bobby Joe Edmonds, the rookie, deep for Seattle. Sails over his head. They'll try to down it, and it gets away and into the end zone. And one interesting, did you see Elder that time try to catch the ball? That's legal. If the defensive back doesn't come, the receiving team doesn't come up and catch it, Elder could have gone in there and caught the ball and downed it inside the three or four yard line, but he just lost sight of it. You might see it on the tail end of this play. He just was going downfield. Now watch Elder come into your screen, number 37. See, he's trying to catch the ball, which is perfectly legal if that defensive back doesn't try to receive the ball. There's Elder on the sideline for the Steelers. Seattle with the ball for the first time now. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter and no score. John L. Williams, Kurt Warner, the setbacks behind David Craig. Gives the ball to Williams, the rookie. Gets a yard to the 20 before Edmund Nelson drags him down. Let's set the starting Seattle offensive lineup now. Strong receiving core. Largent has caught a pass on 123 straight games. And, of course, Warner off the injured knee in 84 gained over 1,000 yards last season. The offensive line, a newcomer to watch, 300-pounder Ron Mattis, starts his first game today. Second and nine for Dave Craig and the Seahawks from their own 21. Largent in motion. his way up to the 25 and a four-yard game. Gary Dunn, the nose tackle, hanging on and dragging Warner down. Let's set the defense now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Keith Willis, who has led the team in sacks two of the last three years, anchors the front line. Linebackers, a Steeler strong point, headed by two-time All-Pro Mike Merriweather. And the story in the secondary, Chris Sheffield, the first rookie free agent to start an opener for Pittsburgh since 1971. Break from the shotgun, third and five. Come on. Got his man. That's Steve Largent, who has caught a pass in the 124th straight game. And listen to the crowd react. He picked up about nine yards on that play for the first down. A big catch for Steve Largent. They seem to always go to him in possession downs when they really need to come up with that first down. 
The record for consecutive games to have caught a pass is 127, caught by Harold Carmichael. And he is just three behind, equaling that record, Steve Larson. First and ten, Seahawks from the 34. Williams and Warner. Motion from Tice, the tight end. Warner with the handoff. Looks for an opening and gets up to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. Just two yards on the play. Robin Cole, the former number one draft choice. And a pro bowler made the stop with help from Brian Hinkle. Again, the Steeler linebackers very strong. That's the strength of this defense on the Pittsburgh Steelers is their linebacking core. Merriweather, Little, Cole, and Hinkle, they just react so well to the ball. Any one of them could be an all-pro. They are just an awesome linebacking core. Second and eight from the 36 for Seattle. High formation in the backfield. Fake to order. Craig over the middle, complete to the 40. Mike Tice, the tight end, making the reception. Six-year veteran out of Maryland. They got four or five on the play. It'll be short of the first down. And that time, Mike Tice had a shadow on his back because he was being covered by, I believe, Merriweather, and he was just, it was almost like it was a shadow running right next to him. But a good throw by Dave Craig. Tice was a college quarterback. Moved to tight end when he came to training camp and getting a starting nod for the Seahawks this year. Third and three for Seattle from the 41. Five defensive backs into the game for the Steelers. Craig from the shotgun. Larger, first down. Six-yard gain and enough for the first down for Seattle. Donnie Shell, the leading interceptor among active NFL players, made the stop. And one thing, number 80, Steve Largent does in your picture. Watch how quickly he turns. Very, very sharp. Donnie Shell, number 31, is an all-pro. Played 13 years, leading interceptor. But he even can't stay with Steve Large. He has such quick moves. Not great blazing speed. One of the greatest receivers in NFL history. Already off to a good start at 86. First and 10. Sheffield, the rookie, made the stop, but not before an 11-yard gain and a first down by Warner. And one of the things that Seattle has done this year is they've brought more motion and more shifting in the backfield. You see the man in motion. That's Largent. Now watch Kurt Warner. He's going to get the ball deep in here. He picks the hole right there. Look how quickly his feet is. He's got great mobility with his feet. And what a difference from last year that motion has made. They are able to run the ball. They were very predictable last year in their offensive scheme. The coaches say Kurt Warner should be poised for his greatest year. Gained over 1,000 yards last year, but was somewhat leg-weary after the knee surgery the year before. First down for the Seahawks. Craig looks deep, can't find anybody, and goes down. Mike Merriweather, been to the Pro Bowl the last two years, and a great athlete with a team record 15 sacks a year ago. Makes the stop for an 11-yard loss. Now watch Merriweather, number 57. He has time to fight off the, the, the back, fight through another lineman, and come back. That's what you call a secondary sack. In other words, the secondary of Pittsburgh caused that sack. They so covered the, the receivers, there was no place for Craig to throw except to go down and do what they call eating the ball. It'll be second down and 19 now. They rule it a nine-yard loss. The ball from the 48 of Seattle. Shotgun formation. Draw play. Warner stopped after a couple of yards. Brian Hinkle not fooled by the draw. There's Hinkle, 53, a five-year veteran from Oregon. Excellent linebacker, really underrated. Runs a 4-6-40, and Merriweather sort of overshadows him, but he's a great player. That's exactly the talk in Pittsburgh, is that Mike Merriweather is su such a superb linebacker that Brian Hinkle doesn't get his due, so to speak. But he is an excellent linebacker and played that play very well. There's Merriweather, number 57. No gain on the play, third and 19 for Seattle. Four minutes, first quarter, no score. Goes deep. Almost intercepted by Shell. He had a hand on it. The pass intended for Daryl Turner. It's knocked incomplete, and Seattle will have to punt. And this is what Donnie Shell would tell you right away. It's a bad place to hit you right in the hands. Donnie Shell, number 31. He's going to be on the right of your screen. Is playing the quarterback's eyes. And watch this. This ball goes right through his hands. That is as close as he'll ever get to number 48. <laughs> There's Donnie Shell, the veteran, the oldest at that safety position in the NFL. 
Vince Gamach is in to punt for Seattle. And there's Gamach, the one-year man from Cal State Fullerton. Woods is deep for Pittsburgh, and he fields it at about the 18. Woods up to the 29-yard line before he's stopped by Fred Young, the superb special teams player for Seattle. A 34-yard punt and a 12-yard return as we look again at the NBC 10-minute ticker to come up to date on all the NFL scores. Well, Houston's proving that they were just as good in preseason as they are in the regular season. 110 degrees down in Tampa Bay as the 49ers win, and here are the game's in progress. From the Steeler 30, Pittsburgh has it first and 10. Again, they go to the run. Walter Abercrombie fights his way forward across the 30, up to about the 33-yard line. Four-yard gain on the play. It'll bring up a second and six for the Steelers. Under three and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter of play and no score from the King Dome in Seattle. Chuck Noll has won four Super Bowls. It is one of only a handful of coaches, four of them actually, to spend 18 years as head coach of the same team. I can name one of the other ones, Landry. <laughs> Curly Lambeau, I think, of Green Bay. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Field is named for him up there. Malone on a swing pass intended for Pollard. It's incomplete. Third down upcoming for the Steelers. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He's had such an up-and-down career. He's been here seven years in Pittsburgh, and he has yet to complete a full season. He's had just flashes of brilliance. He's had flashes of, of the other way, and there's his last year's statistics. Good statistics, 13 uh, touchdowns. It's a good touchdown to interception ratio, but he just hasn't played the way they all thought he would play. And, of course, he's never been able to escape the shadow of Terry Bradshaw. Third and six for the Steelers from their own 34. Malone under pressure. Short hop by Lips, incomplete. Lips was open, but Malone feeling the pressure couldn't get the ball there. And Terry Taylor, who was on Seattle Seahawks, was guarding Lips that time. He felt that he had been pushed off. You can see Malone. He's got a little bit of disgust on his face. There's Terry Taylor. He was arguing with the referee. I was pushed. I was shoved off the line. Bobby Joe Edmonds, the rookie from Arkansas, deep for Seattle, as Harry Newsom will attempt his second part of the afternoon. Good high kick. Edmonds calls for a fair catch and takes it at the 20. Punt covered 46 yards for Harry Newsom, the two-year veteran out of Wake Forest, and we'll get a chance again to see the new-look Seattle Seahawks offense. And I understand it's a bit revolutionary, Dave. The players can make adjustments on their own, really. Not uh, predictable. They can just sue, uh, do what they feel like doing up to a certain point, and the other players must react to that. Absolutely, Tom. That's what they're trying to do. They have a set formation when they come out of the huddle. Any back can shift wherever he wants to, just so long as just before the snap count, he gets back to the formation that they call in the huddle. First down, Seahawks from the 21. 249, first quarter, no score. Third quarter. Gets about four yards, shy of the 25. Brian Hinkle on the stop, make it a gain of three. Keith Willis from his defensive end spot also assisting on the tackle for Pittsburgh. And it's great to see Kurt Warner, number 28, playing so well for this Seattle team. He came back from just a devastating knee injury in his second year, and the coaches and the, the trainers said that he worked out harder than any person they had ever seen with a knee injury. He's so. carried five times for 20 yards this afternoon, Dave. Second and seven. Tight end Hudson. there. Maybe a loss in the play, perhaps back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Harvey Clayton came up quickly from that quarterback spot, one of the pair of free agent quarterbacks for the Steelers starting today's game. I think the one thing that Warner does that's so interesting is that he runs with his feet close to the ground. He's never, he's not one of those high steppers like Roger Craig from, from the 49ers. He is just, his run, his feet are so close to the ground, he can change direction so quickly. It's great mobility in there. The All-American from Penn State led the AFC in rushing as a rookie back in 1983 with almost 1,500 yards. Third and seven for Dave Craig and the Seahawks. away from the rush. Taken down 
shy of the 30. It'll be short of the first down. Brian Hinkle, who had been back on coverage, came up to make the stop after a four-yard gain on the scramble by Craig. And, Tom, that's one of the interesting runs by a quarterback, which we see Knox here. Watch Craig here now. If he is diving forward, you're allowed to hit him. If he slides with his feet first, you're not allowed to hit it. You're not allowed to touch him. They call that a safe slide. Now, what he's doing is he sees the flag, and he's going to try to dive out and make that first down. So he can be hit right there. 22 can absolutely pile on him. See the clock inside a minute 30 as Gamach in punt formation. Woods is deep for the Steelers. Here's a good kick. Woods retreats to his own 20. It's away from one man and then it's snowed under. A 52-yard kick by Vince Gamach and seven yards on the return by Woods. Gamach, the free agent out of Cal State Fullerton, booming one that time. Well, anytime you get the height that he got also, it was 52 yards long. It was probably 75 yards high. It was way up there and allowed him to really get down and cover the ball. So far in the first quarter, two possessions by each team, two punts by each team. Pittsburgh will have it for the third time from their own 28-yard line. First and 10 for Chuck Knoll's aggregation. One and three in the preseason were the Steelers, while the Seahawks were at 500, two and two. High formation in the backfield. Flags fly, here's Malone on a screen. Complete to Abercrombie. And he's taken down shy of the 30. Good play in there by Fred Young, who came in the middle of all the blockers to take a man down. And the flag's flying, and an injured player on the field. A Seahawk is down at the 20. It's Kenny Easley. They're all pro. He was on a safety blitz that time and came in and got his legs chopped out from under him, and he really came down hard. Of course, that would be a terrific loss to the Seahawk defense. Watch the top of the screen and see if we can pick it up, Dave. Yeah, now here, you'll see here he's coming up the top. Now he's way, well, let's see if we can see where he is. Well, I guess that's him right there when he got chopped there. That's where he was coming from. I'm sorry. He got cut out from under him. He just came down hard. Had an ankle problem in preseason, and here in the first game of the regular season, holding his right knee. We hope it's not a knee. It appears right. to be putting weight on it, so. Here's Jerry Seaman. Illegal motion, number 60 offense, penalty decline, second down. Randy Rasmussen called for the illegal motion. Mentioned he was starting his first game today. Four starters counting the tight end on that offensive line. Gothard, Benning, Rasmussen, and Turk are starting their first NFL game. And if you can believe it, I played against Randy Rasmussen, but, but not that one. <laughs> the great one that played for the Jets for years. I understand that they're not related in any way, but... If he's anything like the first Randy Rasmussen that I played against the Jets, he'll have a wonderful career. Kenny Easley being helped to his feet. He's a crowd favorite here in Seattle, and he gets a good ovation from the 64,000 plus here at the Kingdom. And Tom, Kenny Easley is probably the epitome of what a defensive back is. They say he is the most intelligent defensive back that's played this game in this stadium, and he keeps a book on all the wide receivers. He writes down different things, what they like to do. He is just the Mr. Everything here in Seattle and in the National Football League. Three-time All-American at UCLA was the fourth player picked in the 1981 draft, the highest draft ever for a defensive player. Second and eight for Pittsburgh. That slips in motion. Draw play. Abercrombie takes it to the 31-32 yard line, a one-yard gain. Clock ticking down toward the 32nd mark. No score in the first quarter. Fred Young, inside linebacker for the Seahawks, credited with a tackle. Wow, did he get hit that time. He came up there a little tiny. He just tried to cut back a little bit, and he just got stuck. Kenny Easley back into the game for the Seahawks, so he's shaken off the slight injury and is right back after missing only one play. 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Third and seven. Final play of the first quarter. Malone intended for Stallworth incomplete. Dave Brown step for step with Stallworth as the first quarter comes to an end. And Dave Brown's a little upset. He thought that he was pushed off that time. There's Mark Malone, of course, coming to this. Look at him talking to the referee. I think I was pushed off. In other words, what he's saying is the, defense, the offensive receiver, in that case, Stallworth, comes down and gives him just a little shove when he makes his move. And if Dave Brown says it's true, it might be true. 
We played one quarter from the Kingdom in Seattle, and Pittsburgh and Seattle have yet to put anything on the scoreboard. Nothing, nothing. Time again now to check our 10 minute ticker for NFL scores. So Chicago finally wins by 10 over the Cleveland Browns as the defending Super Bowl champion Bears uh, win at home to open the season. Or Houston poured it on Green Bay 31 to 3 and you know they were they went undefeated in preseason and they look like they're one of the teams that's going to be hot in this division. San Francisco and Atlanta scoring 31 apiece to win. And here are the games in progress the late games today. How about that San Diego score 17 nothing in the first quarter. Well Dan Fouts really has that passing game going today down at Jack Murphy San Diego Stadium. Defending AFC champion Patriots on the board against what we expect to be an improved Indianapolis team. And of course, Steeler fans looking at the Cincinnati score with Kansas City leading 7 0. It'll be fourth down for the Pittsburgh Steelers from their own 32 yard line as we begin the second quarter of play. Punting situation. And the Seahawks send Bobby Joe Edmonds deep once again. And Tom, both times that this punter has gotten, Harry Newsom's gotten off the ball, he has a reputation of being a little bit slow. Now, we may see some pressure from Seattle in this situation. Their coaching staff has obviously seen that he's just a little bit slow. That's been the only criticism that he has had in preseason is that he, he just doesn't take the quick rhythm. Newman, the second-year player from Wake Forest. From the 16, gets to the outside. He's got a wall of blockers. Finally, taken out of the run at midfield. Chris Sheffield, the rookie, made a saving tackle for Pittsburgh. to the kingdom from those of you who have seen Chicago beat Cleveland 41 to 31 Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe watching Pittsburgh in Seattle play a scoreless first quarter neither team able to get anything on the board we played one play of the second quarter and the game is scoreless 52 yard punt that time from Newsom but a 34 yard return from Edmonds and the Seahawks have it from midfield in a first down Kurt Warner Gets a couple into Pittsburgh territory. Gary Dunn, the nose tackle, sliding outside to make the stop. That was just an excellent play by Gary Dunn. He is the nose tackle on the center. He has to hit the center, control the center play all the way down the line. And he made that tackle about 20 yards from the center of the field. So that's a great play by a nose tackle. I know what that's like in there. 22 yards on seven rushes for Warner, who comes off a 1,000-yard season in 1985. Second and seven, they say. Three yard gain officially on the play. Dave Craig. Knocked away by the linebacker Merriweather. And almost able to make the uh, grab on the second try was Tice. And what? I told you Mike Merriweather, number 57, is like a shadow. And he should be smiling walking back in there. He has played fantastic football for the Steeler team. They say he, he covers downfield 35, 40 yards. Well, he has 4-5 speed in the 40, so he can stay with those wide receivers. Been to the Pro Bowl the last two years as Mike Merriweather. Third and seven for Seattle. The ball at the Steeler, 47-yard line. 14 minutes to play in the second quarter. No score from the Kingdom. Craig, out of the Warner, puts a move on. Shy of the 40. It'll be short of the first down. Brian Hinkle, the outside linebacker, made the stop after a five-yard gain. And that's good evidence of his quick feet. You saw, you said he put a move on the linebacker, and he really does. And he gets there, he's got that great open field. If they can just get the ball to him on swing plays, it's going to be hard for anybody, even Brian Hinkle, to cover him, number 53. Well, every possession in the game thus far has ended in a punt, and with fourth and two, Seattle again will punt it away with Vince Gamache in punt formation, and Rick Woods deep to receive it for the Steelers. Woods, number 22, standing at his own 10. Gamache had a plus 50-yarder his last time. Woods lets it bounce. Steelers let it go, and the Seahawks unable to doubt it before it goes into the end zone, 
and Pittsburgh will put it into play at the 20 yard line when we come back to action in the Kingdom at Seattle. 13 11 to play second quarter no score. We'll be right back. Here the plays off the opening kickoff but the last two series have been three plays and punt. Malone on a screen to Abercrombie. Tom, that's one of the things that Seattle does so well, the takeaways. They were so opportunistic last year. They had 44 takeaways. And you'll see on this play as Abercrombie catches the ball. It's just a swing screen. Now, see, he's catching, carrying that ball out there a little bit like a loaf of bread. He's in heavy traffic. Good hit right on the ball by, I think that's Bruce Schultz. And he just really come up with the ball. That's, that's the thing that has made them so successful over the years. Schultz knocked it away, and the Seahawks make the recovery. They'll have an opportunity to score when we come back to Seattle. You're about to. Former All-Pro defensive player with the Oakland Raiders, and so I know you've liked to see this defensive struggle so far. And appropriately enough, it's the Seattle defense that has put them in a chance to get the first points of the game. That is the big point of the game, Tom, is that we play this game, and you play for breaks and opportunities, and that's what Seattle has done so well over the last year and starting off this year. They give their offense the ball back on the 25-yard line of Pittsburgh. That's a big, big turnover. The last three possessions, the first Seattle play has been a run. Let's see what happens as they line up in the I formation. Craig goes to the air. Swing pass is complete. Out of bounds, a gain of about eight yards to Steve Largent. Now let's go to Bob Costage for an update from NFL 86. All right, Tom, in Denver, another renewal of hostility between the Raiders and the Broncos, and it's tied now at seven in the first. After this, Mark Wilson pass to Marcus Allen. It covers 24 yards. Earlier, John Elway, 35 to Steve Watson for a Denver score. Tom? Here in Seattle, we're scoreless in the second quarter. The Seahawks second and two from the 17 of Pittsburgh. Larger in motion, flags down. Warner gets the call at a couple of yards. John L. Williams was the ball carrier, the rookie from Florida, but the flag's on the play. And that's a legal motion, Jerry Seaman just indicated. One of the backs or linemen just got a little bit too quick. Jerry Seaman tries to sort things out. In the meantime, let's check our 10-minute ticker for the game's in progress. Now San Diego score still holding up 17 to nothing in the second Illegal quarter. motion, number 85 offense, still second down. Jerry Seaman in the background with the call. It'll be second and seven coming up from the 22 for the Seattle Seahawks. Scoreless in the second quarter for the Kingdom. Seattle having problems with penalties during the preseason. And this one sets them back to the 22. Craig. For the end zone. Incomplete intended for Larson. Harvey Clayton, the quarterback, down in the end zone covering Largent, who today already has three receptions and has caught a pass in 124 straight. Now watch this play. You'll see that Largent never quits on the pattern. It's a little bit overthrown, so he's going to have to dive out, but you just don't look, think of wide receivers doing what he does. Look at that great concentration. He all, another few inches, and he has that ball. And, of course, uh, he had Clayton beaten by three or four steps in the corner of the end zone. Well, Harvey Clayton has been one of the problems that they have back there. He's probably the weakest of those defensive backs, but he's still an excellent defensive back. Nickel defense for the Steelers, third and seven for Seattle from the 22, from the shotgun. Craig again for the end zone, locks it up high and incomplete out of the end zone. Ray Butler was down in the end zone. It looked like maybe a misconnection on the pattern. And the fans let the boos go. Dave Craig heard a lot of boos last year. He says he's ready. He says that's a motivating factor for him as he approaches the 86 season. Well, I never I never liked getting booze. Fortunately, I played defensive line and we don't get mentioned out there. But Craig that time really didn't have enough time to find Butler and just launched it up in the air, hoping Butler would see it. But as you said, there was a misconnection. Norm Johnson will attempt the field goal. It'll be spotted at the 30. So a 40 yard attempt. He was 14 of 25 in field goals last year. Beasley's hold. It's no good. 
So the Seahawks misfire on the attempt to for score the first points in the game, and so far the offenses have sputtered and the defenses have dominated. No score from Seattle. For Seattle on field goal attempts this year and makes a good job of receiving the snap and putting it down. And Johnson just missed it. Well, he does. Most sidewinder kickers or soccer-style kickers have that, that natural hook, but uh, that time Johnson just didn't have that natural hook. Rich Ehrenberg in the backfield for the Steelers on first down. Pollard hit and dropped at the 20. Graves, the linebacker, gained great gains, and Keith Butler, the linebacker, is coming up to make the stop. And he lost a yard on the play. And that was a big hit by number 56, Greg Gaines. He and Michael Jackson really fought it out this year for the starting position, and Greg Gaines won it this week, supposedly. Walter Abercrombie of Pittsburgh has a bruised hip. He may not return this afternoon. You can see, see the, the ice? ice. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tom. I meant to say see the ice bag there. <laughs> Rich Ehrenberg replaces him, so Pollard and Ehrenberg are the setbacks. Wide receivers to either side. Second 11 for the Steelers. Below retreats, pumps. Intercepted. Terry Taylor intercepts the pass intended for Lips. And Tom, that was just great coverage by, by Taylor on that play. Terry Taylor, number 20. Played that ball all the way out of the backfield. Now, Lips is going to give a little short hitch here to try and draw Taylor up and then go long, but Taylor did not fall for it. He's running stride for stride, and Malone really made a poor choice and threw that ball into great coverage. Taylor, who had four interceptions last season, picks off one here in the opening game and gives Seattle the ball in Pittsburgh territory at the 46. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the game, or remaining in the first half, and so far, no score. Secondary picks off one and put him down into Steeler territory. John L. Williams plows ahead for eight yards. Dennis Winston makes the stop for Pittsburgh. Tom, I think the thing that really hurts the defense is you've just come out and they avoided that fumble. They avoided a score and they were really pumped up and charged. Now all of a sudden the offense turns the ball right back over. It takes a lot of steam out of the sails. I mean, you have to get back juiced up there and ready to play. Second and two for the Seahawks. I formation. Frank calls his signals. Now they switch to the split backs. Warner. He has, I think, enough yardage for the first down. It'll be close. Dennis Winston again pounds him to the turf with help from Dunn. And, Tom, one of the things that has been really remarkable for this preseason is the young man, number 32, John L. Williams, a rookie, to come in here and block that well for Warner. They really complement each other. Their coaching staff has really been pleased with the progress of Williams. They said that they, they block for each other, they run well, they carry the ball, and they haven't done anything wrong in preseason in the running game. Measurement for the first down. Ooh, it's a game of inches. Yeah, Move your leg like out of the way yeah, there. Just a little short. <laughs> <laughs> Three first downs apiece so far, and Seattle just inches short of getting number four and keeping the drive alive. We talked about John L. Williams, third leading rusher in University of Florida history with 2,409 yards and the number one pass receiving running back. You mentioned his name to the Seattle coaching staff, and they break out in smiles. Third and less than a yard, just a few inches for the Seahawks. Warner dives, takes it down to the 35, and a Seahawk first down. Now, they didn't try a quarterback sneak, did they? They, they gave it to their running back. They know he's getting paid back there. But good surge by both lines. Both lines kind of negated their force. You'll see that. Now, watch. The defense is just trying to get penetration. The offense is just trying to stop them. And here comes Warner over the top. Trying to get that little a good linebacker play there. If he had met him square in the hole, he might have stopped that, but good play. Chuck Knox hopes his team can get on the board on this drive. Three different teams to the playoffs. Two of the best in the business opposing each other at the Kingdome today. First down from the 35. Warner bobbles and drops it. And then gets a shot, adding insult <laughs> to injury from the rookie Sheffield. <laughs> Sheffield just came up and said, I just wanted to let you know I was out there. You looked like you were wide open. 
Here's our 10 minute ticker to check the other scores in progress around the NFL. situation here. As the time, finally gets pressure and sends it complete downfield to Largent for a first down. He beat Clayton again on the corner. Harvey Clayton having all kinds of problems covering Steve Largent, who gains about 14 or 15 yards on the play. When you cover a Steve Largent, you can see right there, now Clayton turns his back. That's where you leave him. Now the thing about Largent is this is a scramble play. And Larchin just runs the pattern so well, comes back to the ball. Great concentration. Because he doesn't have that blazing speed, you almost have a tendency to look off him and not pay attention to him. But with his record, wow, you need to pay attention to him. Look at that streak of games. Four receptions for 37 yards this afternoon. Gives Seattle a first down at the Pittsburgh 20. Look at this formation. There's an evidence of that new Seattle offensive look. Craig for the end zone. Incomplete, knocked away. By Sheffield. They went to him. They tested him. Turner took him to the end zone, and Sheffield was up to the task. And Tony Dungy, who is his coach for Pittsburgh, says he is just an outstanding player. You can see Turner here is going to try to do a post pattern, fake the outside, and burn to the inside. Look at the position by Sheffield. Excellent position. Just, just great. You can't play any better than that on that play. And against Daryl Turner, who had 13 receptions for touchdowns last year, number one in the NFL. Well, they said the thing that makes Turner, that makes Sheffield so easy to grasp this is he's such an intelligent, articulate young man. Second and ten for the Seahawks. Largent shows motion. Craig flies down, complete to the five to Turner. There's Clayton. They're not getting much done on Sheffield's side, but they're picking on Harvey Clayton and having success. Let's check the penalty. This is probably going to be a holding call against Seattle. It is. That really hurts Seattle because they had the ball down deep. You mentioned the problem that Clayton has. They feel he has really come a long way from last year when they really picked on him because on the other side they had Dwayne Woodruff. But then Sheffield had to move over. Illegal use of hands to the face, number 71 offense, still second down. But the thing about Clayton is he's just a little bit short for a defensive back. He has to make it up with that speed. He's only five foot nine, and that's not really tall enough. You have to make it up for speed to carry the to cover these wide receivers with this 6'2, 6'3 size. Penalty sets the ball back to the 30-yard line. It'll be second and 20 for the Seahawks, who continue to sputter on offense. 8.40 to play in the second quarter and no score. sack for the Steelers the second time they have taken Craig down for a loss today. Now let's go to Bob Costas for an update at NFL 86. Thanks Tom. After a 54 yarder from Mark Wilson to Doki Williams set it up. Wilson goes to the air again. 16 yards to the tight end Todd Christensen. Moments later John Elway chased out of the end zone for a safety. The Raiders lead in the first at mile high 16-7. Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe from the Kingdom. No score. Clock shows eight minutes, ten seconds of play in the second quarter. Paul McGuire, Ahmad Rashad, Bob Costas and gang at NFL 86. Joined by Frank DeFord. Quite a good team for NBC. Craig complete. But it'll be short of the first down. Scanzi made the reception and Hinkle there on the stop. And looks like we have another player down. An injured Steeler. There's Hinkle who made the tackle. Five-year veteran from Oregon, excellent linebacker. Daryl Turner, also we understand, has been taken to the Seattle locker room with an injury. We'll get a report on the extent of that injury as we see the injured Steeler. Uh, we're not sure who it is. We can't see who it is, and we'll try to check it out for you. Right now, we're going to take a break. No score from the Kingdom. Dave Gerald Williams, who just made a sack before that, was injured, the rookie from Auburn. Well, you're not allowed to chop block on the line of scrimmage, but the center comes back and chops him. Of course, it was off the line of scrimmage where he chopped him. Norm Johnson will attempt a field goal for the Seahawks. He missed one from 40 yards earlier in the game. Ball spotted at the 36. This kick is up. And again, no good. 
Johnson misses for the second time in the game, and the Seahawks remain scoreless. Well, that was that a base. 46 yard attempt, Dave, <laughs> and again, he took it to the other side that time. So we're still scoreless. Pittsburgh and Seattle, nothing, nothing. We'll be right. Norm Johnson has misfired on two field goal attempts. What do you see in this one? Well, I think on this one, he has that natural hook that most soccer style kickers have. And you can see at the last minute, just kind of hooks out of the way. He didn't have that on his first one. He's missed one on either side now. Now he's going to come down the middle. The Pittsburgh offense has been getting progressively worse in the game. Their best drive was their opening one. And they've turned it over the last two times they've had it. Malone completes a pass, flags on the play. Was it complete or incomplete? The Seahawk players on the sideline are saying incomplete. And I think the officials said he caught it. Well, this Ehrenberg, they caught it. Excuse me, Dave. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, this is where we have the instant replay. Now, this is going to be pass interference against the offense, so it doesn't make a difference. But we have the ability, The this year we have the replay official who is up in the uh, press box with a video camera looking at that play saying yes or no, he did not catch it. They ruled it complete, but of course there was an offensive pass interference away from the ball. The official, as I understand it, if he sees, there's the NFL, uh, Norm Schechter, the NFL replay official added to the crew this year. And the official away from the ball, if he sees a man perhaps blocking downfield or something, will wait and see if a pass is thrown, and at that time, he'll let the flag go. Apparently is what happened on that play. 7.30, remaining in the second quarter, the Steelers and Seahawks are scoreless. First and 20 for Pittsburgh. Lips in motion. Malone to Stallworth. Takes it up to about the 22, only a four-yard gain. Greg Gaines, the five-year veteran from the University of Tennessee, made the stop. Here's the 10-minute ticker. Dolphins on the board finally against the Chargers. The other game's in progress, all close, including our scoreless battle here in the Kingdom. The wave is going around the Kingdom at the moment. This could be one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL with the concrete roof. Second and 15. Pollard takes it shy of the 30. Kenny Easley, who was shaken up earlier, makes the stop after a six-yard game. Now let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING-TV, Channel 5, Seattle. Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe from the Kingdome in Seattle. We're in the second quarter with six minutes, 28 seconds to play, and so far scoreless. The defenses have dominated the game thus far. Seattle has tried two field goal attempts. They have not been good. And again, it's the defense that is... Dominated the game thus far. Well, the Seattle fans made the way famous, and they're practicing oh. their trade right now. They are. And you talked about this could be the loudest stadium. This is the loudest stadium I've ever been in. Third and nine. Malone has hit on only 40% of his passes. Scrambles away. Let's fire. Incomplete. Lewis Lips. Stallworth both downfield trying to... And really Make the reception and good coverage. Yes, it was, Tom. Malone really doesn't have anyone to throw to here. There's Lewis Lips, number 83. Now, he's going to try to cut back across the middle on this scramble. See, he gets picked up by Kenny Easley. Look at that, running shoulder for shoulder. Doesn't put his hands on him. And just a, just excellent cover by cover, Kenny Easley. Good coverage by the Steelers, by both Taylor and Easley. And another punting situation for the Steelers, Harry Newsom. Edmonds. Takes it at the 31. Tries to get outside. Nice tackle on the play. They rule him down. He's still going, but this, the play will be called dead. The play will be dead back at the 42. Now, what he thought and what the official played, now, this is an interesting call because he felt when he went down that he was sitting on top of a, one of the Pittsburgh Steelers and that his knee was not down. Now, this is... We're going to see Jerry see Now watch and see if, it's, if he ever touches the ground. See, he's, he feels he's sitting on top of the Steeler. His feet are both up. He may have a point there. We may have to look at this thing again. Well, but the replay official it doesn't come into play here because when the whistle blows, the play is stopped. They cannot correct it on the replay. Absolutely. Let's look at this again. Now watch and see if he ever touches the ground. There. Now see, he sits on top of him. He's got his feet back up under him. But as you said, the whistle blows right there. 
and the play is over. So Seattle will put it in play from the 42 when we come back. Let's watch the replay of that last one with Edmonds receiving the punt. Was he down or not? Well, I don't think he was quite down, even though he's sitting on top of the Steelers. Let's see how quickly he got his feet back up. But the instant replay doesn't go into effect in that play because that's not a possession play. So the fans don't like it, but the Seahawks have the ball first and 10 from their own 42. No score in the game, 547 remaining first half. Warner on the deep handoff, flags down. He's got some running room down the sideline. And it's finally chased out of bounds by Eric Williams. And Tom, I saw a flinch that time by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they line up so close on the ball that it could have been them being called offside, which would allow the play to go forward. A 30-yard gain will stand. The penalty against Pittsburgh. Jerry Seaman makes the call. Defense offside, the man over center. Penalty decline, first down. So it was Gerald Williams, the rookie from Auburn, that jumped offside, and Warner took advantage of it. Well, the, the Steelers line up so close on that ball. They line up on the angle. Look at that run by Kurt Warner. You said he's going to have a great year. Everybody's expecting it, including him, and he's off to a good start today. You see the moves he made? That knee oh. must be all right. He's not wearing a brace this year. He's certainly off to a good start in the opening game of the season. From the 28, first down Seahawks. This is the current vintage Kurt Warner at Penn State. He is back to 100%. It's obvious to see. Now watch the way he explodes. He's just kind of gliding out there. Now watch when he sees the hole right there's the hole. Now look, boom, there it goes the legs. There's another hole right there. And he, he just has that acceleration when he gets in there, that, that quick, fast step. And you can see his results, 11 carries and 76 yards already. And 51 of his yards in the last two plays. And that offensive line, which was really a sore spot last year, doing a good job, especially on this drive. First and goal from the seven. Williams takes it short of the five-yard line. A gain of only one, Brian Hinkle from the outside linebacking spot, up in a hurry to make the stop on the rookie from Florida. Well, those defensive linemen can stop the surge of Seattle. These linebackers will make the play. Hinkle and Merriweather, of course, David Little, and even Robin Cole in there. They really are active linebackers, but they have to stop the initial serve. The front three defensive linemen have got to hold strong in their positions for this defense to work. Second and goal from the six. Warner gets a block. Turns the corner, strips. He stumbled and went down about the five-yard line. A two-yard gain. Donnie Shell up to put pressure, but Warner just stripped. Well, this is an astroturf field because it's inside, of course. And this turf has a grain to it. In other words, the, the little fibers that make up this turf, you can see right here, you're going to see when he tries to turn, he just almost stubs his toe. See right there? He stubs his left toe, and down he goes. It has a grain, and you have to get used to running on it. It'll be third down for Seattle. Third and goal. The ball at the four-yard line. Williams is the up back. Warner is the tailback in the eye formation. Now Warner in motion. Craig to the air. Mr. Touchdown, Darrell Turner on the reception. Four yards for the TD. Love it here in Seattle. They call him Burner Turner, and he does. He burns the defensive safety. He'll be in the right of your screen. It's just a throw-up pass, and he turns the defensive corner, Sheffield, around, and Turner comes down with a touchdown reception. You talked about that great ratio that he has, touchdowns per receptions. That doesn't hurt his, uh, his average, does it? At 13 receiving touchdowns a year ago, that's his first of 86, first score in the game. Johnson tries to tack on the extra point. could be a big point. Extra points are almost considered just automatic. And when you miss one, that is a big turning point of the game because it makes the field goal be so important. And Pittsburgh has a great field goal kicker. 
So the extra point not in the books, but Seattle's on the board. Seahawks lead by six. A year ago, Gail Gilbert, the backup quarterback, was the holder. Kenny Easley, the holder this year, and he's having some problems. He certainly is. He doesn't get the ball clean. He bobbles it, and it's a timing play. And when Johnson comes through, he has nowhere to kick, and Easley's just got to fall down with it. But they have had a problem in the holds. And a kicker will tell you he's only as good as his holder. If that holder doesn't get the ball up and doesn't have it on the right angle, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. A lot of times we look at an extra point, Tom, as being almost automatic. And that can play a big factor in a ball game when you miss one of those. Norm Johnson had missed two field goals earlier, and perhaps uh, some of the blame should lie with a holder easily. We'll continue to watch that throughout the afternoon. Donnie Elder deep for the Steelers as Johnson set to kick it off. Seahawks lead 6-0 with 3.25 to play in the second quarter. Kick fielded by Elder inside the 10. That's a move up the middle. Upended finally at about the 32 yard line. Nice return by Elder. Norm Johnson, the kicker, was the one that made the tackle. 21 yard return. And again, here's the exclusive NBC Sports 10 minute ticker. Every 10 minutes will be on the air to bring you up to date on all the scores. And we'll check the early games, the final scores, and then proceed on to the games in progress. Every 10 minutes, you can tune to NBC and see the latest in NFL scores all season long. Pittsburgh been able to get a first down the last 12 plays. Pollard about to the 35-yard line. Butler and Brown combining on the tackle after a three-yard gain by Pollard. Rich Ehrenberg continues in the backfield for the injured Abercrombie as we check the games in progress on our 10-minute ticker. Boy, Miami is coming back in that one. Second and six now for the Steelers from their own 36-yard line, approaching the two-and-a-half-minute mark in the second quarter. Malone on a screen. Pollard has a couple of blockers, fights his way to the 45, and a Steeler first down. Free safety Eugene Robinson. On the hit, a 10-yard gain for Pittsburgh. And I watched that time. Dan Turk came over and uh, kind of bent over. He's limping a little bit, number 51. They cannot afford to lose another center in this play. He's in the center of your screen there. Now, this is just a little slip screen. He's supposed to give ground and just dump it over top of their heads. And when, uh, when I saw Dan Turk, it looked as if he hurt his knee or his ankle on that play. Two-minute warning is coming up. Stop the action with exactly two minutes remaining. Apparently okay, replacing Mike Webster, who's missing a game for the first time in his career after 177 straight. You played against Webster. Oh, he was wonderful. He had the, I say that in, in the respect, I want to tell you, I never liked playing against him. He was such a great finesse blocker. He, he used his body, he had great leverage. He always was in perfect position. But the thing that bothered me the worst was he was always such a perfect gentleman out there. Oh, it killed me, Tom. <laughs> His string of 177 broken today. He was the third active player in number of games consecutively played. Malone in trouble and sacked by Young. Nineteen-yard loss on the play as Young, third-year veteran out of New Mexico State and a two-time Pro Bowler, makes the big sack. And if you're going to bail out of there, you better have speed. This time Malone's looking downfield. He sees him coming in there. He just tries to run outside, and he just doesn't have that speed to get outside. and takes a 19-yard loss on that play. That really hurts the Steelers. They have been backed up all day. They just haven't gotten anything besides that first initial drive when you said they drove 12 plays. A minute 30 remaining in the first half of play. Seattle leading at 6-0. Second and 28 coming up for the Steelers. Malone dumps it across the middle of Pollard, who just drops it with no one around. Well, that's the age old. I wanted to run with it before I caught it. Pollard swung out of the backfield, and Malone hit him quickly to allow him to get upfield and get, you know, find out where the hole is, so to speak. And Pollard just took his eyes off the ball, was looking upfield to see where he was going to run, and dropped the ball. Clock stops with a minute 21 showing. 
And a third and 28 for the Steelers. The Seahawks could get another chance to score in pretty good field position. Well, Pittsburgh's got to be pleased only being down six to nothing because their defense has played very, very well. There are the figures on Malone so far. Intercepted. Gaines dragged down at the 35. The Seattle defense with another big play. Well, we talked about it being opportunistic. Well, they have 88 takeaways or 88 interceptions in the last three years. They've got two today. Malone throws to one of the only few people that's open. Unfortunately, he has a blue jersey on. It's number 56, I should say. But he just, is, he just doesn't pick up that first receiver real well. Now, you'll see they're just dropping deep here in this play, and, and he just finds Greg Gaines wide open, number 56. Even if he had thrown that ball in there to Lewis Lips, he was well covered. Seahawks with three timeouts left and a minute 11 showing on the clock. Have a first down of the Steeler 34. Fake to order. Craig. Complete. First down. Seahawks at the 15. Mike Tice, the tight end, dragging across the middle, makes the first down reception, and the Seahawks stop the clock with a timeout. 18-yard game. Well, that was just a well-thrown ball. It, there's nothing. There was nothing faulted in the coverage by the Steelers. They had covered Tice very closely, but Craig just pulled him out and just put that ball right in there, the only place it could be thrown, and the result was a completion. Seattle leads 6-0, and they're driving closing stages of the first half. the interception on the tip ball let's check the penalty flags where that where that flag was thrown Tom it should be offensive holding against the Seahawks a big turnaround for the Pittsburgh Steelers illegal hands to the face number 70 Yo, offense penalty decline first down Ron Mattis was called for the penalty there's Mattis first year player from Virginia who spent Last season on injured reserve. Who tips the ball here? I believe it's Gary Dunn, number 70. No, he doesn't. He throws it right off the back of the helmet of his own offensive lineman. And you watch how quickly Harvey Clayton reacts back to this ball. Great interception there by Clayton playing the ball. Ten-minute ticker keeps you up to date on all the scores from around the NFL. With 54 seconds remaining here, the Steelers have it at their own four. After the interception by Clayton. with some running room up the middle. He fumbles. Seattle has it. I was just going to say the one thing you don't want to do is fumble in this situation. You're not going to score a touchdown. Rarely will you score a touchdown. And when Pollard falls on his back, when he falls down on his back, the ball just pops out of there. You can see a ball coming out right there. He loses the ball. Seattle, again, that opportunistic defense comes up with it. And they've got the ball first down on the 14-yard line. You can see the ball just get, kind of gets raked out of there. There's the ball coming out. And Kerry Justin will fall on it for the Seahawks, who are back in business with 49 seconds left. First down at the 14 of Pittsburgh. Warner in motion. Craig in trouble. Ball loose. And he'll be sacked back at around the 20-yard line. They'll rule no fumble. They'll rule that he was in the grasp and down at the 20 as Keith Willis came rushing in there to put the hit on Craig. He has led this team in sacks two of the last three years. Third sack today for Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh has to be pleased with their defense. You'll see the surge, the defensive line. There's 93. That's Willis. Now watch. He just hits the arm and just yanks him down. He's really fortunate that ball did not come out in that play. And a timeout is taken, stopping the clock with 42 seconds left. Willis had 14 sacks back in 1983 that set a Pittsburgh record, which has since been broken by uh, Keith Merriweather or Mike Merriweather. And meanwhile, Steve Moore, the offensive coordinator of the Seahawks, who has installed this new look offensive set for the Seahawks, talking to Dave Craig along with Coach Chuck Knox. And you notice that Chuck Knox doesn't say too much. It was Steve Moore, the man to the right, He's the offensive coordinator. He's got blonde hair. You'll see him right there. 
he is really the leader of this team. Chuck Knox gives a lot of responsibility to assistant coaches here. And Steve Moore, as we said, has come in with this innovative type of motion. And a lot of people moving around. And he's done a lot for the Seahawks offense. In fact, has given his players more responsibility. In fact, Dave Craig now calls the formation in the huddle where they used to call it from the sideline. Reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most viable player for today's game at the end of the contest. 42 seconds left. Seattle second and 17 from the Steeler 21. Here's Craig. Intercepted by Pittsburgh. The booze ring out as Craig throws another interception. This one picked off by the free safety Eric Williams. And Eric Williams, number 21, is a center fielder on this play. They're dropping back. They know Seattle wants to score a touchdown. He's playing. He's going to be to the right of your screen. And you may see him when Largent comes across. You'll see that Williams is just a center fielder. There he comes, steps right in play. He's playing the quarterback's eyes. And Craig never looked off Steve Largent on that play. And really, Eric Williams played that very well. Well, Craig and Malone have both been plagued by inconsistency throughout their careers, and they're showing that trait here in the first half of today's game. Pittsburgh with 35 seconds left, and the ball at their own six will now try to kill the clock. Remember, they fumbled it last time. This is where you just fall down. This is what they should have done last time with 42 seconds left. And Tom, you really have to be pleased if you're a Pittsburgh fan with this defense. They have really answered the call under extreme pressure. And Chuck Knoll, he's not going to, Chuck Knox, he's not going to sit in there and say, hey, defense, you've got to play tougher. He's going to say, offense, we've got to get something started. Well, the offense has done very little except for the opening drive, which covered 12 plays. And the team's already leaving the field as you see the clock ticking down. There will not be another play as the first half comes to an end. Well, the defenses have told the tale in the first half of play at the Kingdome. It's been a defensive struggle so far as the offenses have sputtered and the Seahawks hold a 6-0 lead at halftime. Sleep fumbled the hold. Ready to start the second half now. Pittsburgh will kick it off. Taken out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Now let's check the first half stats. Seahawks with a lead in first downs and almost 100 yards rushing to only 41 for the Steelers. And yards passing, of course. Again, Seahawks with a big lead. The total yards, a big disparity there with the Seahawks and a 6-0 lead. But more of an advantage in the total yards in that first half. Well, look at the turnovers, too. Four turnovers for the Steelers, and they've only resulted in six points, so that's a big plus for them if there is a plus in turnovers. From the 27, Seahawks put it in play, opening series of the third quarter. Warner to the outside. Donnie Shell forces him out of bounds after a two- or three-yard gain, and a flag on the play. And, Tom, that may be a face mask by Donnie Shell. It would be an inadvertent face mask, perhaps. There's two different types of face mask penalties, if, in fact, it is a face mask. The one is a blatant five, 15, and the other one is only five. There's Donnie Shell, number 31. He's played 13 years and probably one of the most respected face mask, safeties in this game. Only on the tackler, it is a five-yard face down. mask penalty. Donnie Shell, at 34 years old, the oldest starting, oldest starting safety in the NFL. And He's done that a time or two. He used a little uh, face mask to his well, advantage. Well, you see the difference is that it was only five yards because he didn't use the face mask to rip them down. Here's the 10-minute ticker reviewing the scores. The early games, all finals now. And in a moment, we'll check the games in progress. First down after the penalty with a four yards to go for the first down. John L. Williams. The rookie from Florida gets it to the 35, a two-yard gain. Inside backer David Little with the tackle as we continue to review the NFL scores on our 10-minute ticker. Well, I like this 10-minute ticker. If I was, I could tune in any time, just every 10 minutes on the hour. Every 10 minutes, we'll be bringing you the latest NFL scores so you can stay with us all day long, and we'll tell you what's happening all throughout the NFL. Second and two from the 35 Seahawks. Largent in motion. Warner dives 
steps forward and didn't get much. No gain on the play, maybe a yard. David Little for the second consecutive down makes the stop. And a little shoving and pushing. Merriweather and Warner starting to square off. The officials break it up. And I don't think I'd want to mess with Mike Merriweather, number 57. He is quite a specimen. Six foot three, about 220 pounds. And Kurt may be, may be fast, but the be reason you get to be fast is because you're not that tough. <laughs> Jerry Seaman gives a little help on getting the pads back under the jersey. Warner's had a good day. It looks like vintage Kurt Warner. Third down and two yards to go for Seattle. Seahawks lead 6-0, opening minutes of the third quarter. Craig and the man wide open. Turner makes the first down reception. Eric Williams made the tackle, an eight-yard first down gain for Turner. They gave him plenty of room because of that deep speed, and he cut up to make the first down. Well, you can see Clayton in the background. He's number 33. The one thing he does not want to do is get beaten deep. He's gotten beaten deep several times this preseason because they say he's such an, an aggressive hitter. But with the speed of Turner and a third down and one, you can throw it out there and really get in trouble in a hurry. It looks like Edwin Bailey is shaken up on the play for Seattle. We'll take a break with the Seahawks leading 6-0. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Stroh's and Stro Light. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe from the Kingdom in Seattle. Seahawks with a first and ten from their own 43, leading 6-0 with 13 minutes remaining in the third quarter. John Borchardt in at a guard spot as Craig goes to the air. Swing it, uh, swings it out intended for John L. Williams with Mike Merriweather step for step right with him all the way. Oh, I thought Merriweather was the one he was throwing to. Merriweather picks up the, the defense, the offensive back coming out of the backfield, and Craig was lucky he just threw this thing out of the band. Look at Merriweather start to pull off there. Great balance, just stays right with him. He's running stride for stride. Wow, he is a great one-on-one -on -one coverer. Buff Williams once sort of disrupting the timing of the pattern and then was right there and the pass incomplete. It'll be second and ten for Seattle. John Borchardt in at left guard replacing Edwin Bailey who was shaken up for Seattle. Craig again will go to the air. Across the middle and incomplete. Almost intercepted. Donnie Shell defending on the play as they try to get it to tight end Mike Tice. You know, last year, uh, Craig was dropped for more yardage than any other quarterback. Not the number of times, but lost more yardage attempting to pass in those sacks. This year, they wanted to get a little bit more time and a little bit more uh, ability for him to pick up that secondary receiver. And their li his line has done a pretty good job, but he has been flushed and rushed a couple times. They've been sacked three times today for a minus 23. Third and 10 from the shotgun. Picked up by Seattle. And Tom, the one thing that Steve Largent does so well, and I remember the Raiders, their wide receivers did it, they come back to the ball. Watch Largent on this play. He's number 80. Now he's coming off the ball. Now watch how he comes back. He's against Sheffield. Good coverage. Now watch. He doesn't just wait there. He comes back towards the ball in between two men and picks up a big, big first down for him. 19-yard gain. He has been uh, amazing over his 11-year career from Tulsa. And uh, vintage Steve Largent today. He's been outstanding in this game. Spot the ball at the 39 at Pittsburgh. First down, Seattle. Inside the 20. Tice, the tight end, makes the reception. Donnie Shell defending and Robin Cole also back in coverage. That one went for 21 yards as the Seahawks passing game begins to click. Well, it's passing because now they're that time they didn't get much pressure. The defensive secondary, you'll see them in the back of your screen. They're playing man, they're playing zone coverage to start. The linebackers are playing man to man. See everybody's dropping deep to a zone. Trying to pick up. Now watch the time that Craig has. He has time to pull it back down and pull it back up. You just have got to get pressure on this quarterback. The, by the way, Pittsburgh's off defensive line had no sacks in preseason. 
Mike Tice having a good game. Had only two pass receptions all last year. First down at the 18. Williams, not much there. Brian Hinkle playing the run tough. Wow, play it tough is right. Number 53 in the center of your screen. You talk about a perfect tackle. He sticks his helmet right on the numbers of the running back. And Blair Bush has shaken up the Seahawks center. Been some injuries throughout the game today. Another 10 minutes has gone past. And again, we'll check our 10 minute ticker. Well, Show you this time the game's in progress. And the Raiders Denver game, of course, of a lot of interest to Seahawks fans. Yeah, there's some really interesting scores here. Huh? I like this idea. And you see finally the score here at the King Dome with Seattle driving with a 6 0 lead. Blair Bush, the nine year veteran who played here at the University of Washington, started all 16 games for the Seahawks last year, came here after a trade from Cincinnati. There's Sheffield, turned his ankle a little bit, put the rookie back on the field for the Steelers. You know, as a player, I can remember very few free agent people. That free agent means that he wasn't drafted. He just said, let me have a tryout. Give me a chance. I think I can play. And he has proven that he can play for this Pittsburgh team, and he's proven very well. There's the situation. Second and 10 from the 18. 10.50 remaining in the third quarter. Seahawks up by six. Warner gets the pitch and has taken down a good tackle on the play. The Steelers, Merriweather, was blocked, fought off the blocker, and tripped Warner up. Yes, John L. Williams, number 32, just comes in and really sticks Mike Merriweather. And, but he doesn't knock his feet out. Merriweather's able to get one hand up there and trip up Kurt Warner. Just an outstanding play by that linebacker. Watch this here. You'll see that. Now, you might not see the block. Watch right. There's the block. But look at Merriweather. Keeping that feet. Gets the arm out. Just trips up Kurt Warner. Boy, I tell you, I don't think you can play better linebacker play than these linebackers for Pittsburgh. Third and ten. Dave Craig and the Seahawks in the shotgun. High snap. Craig pulled it down. Pass sails incomplete in the end zone. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, was it? It looked as if it was tipped. It was a floater over the center. There was no one there. He's trying. It looked to me as if he was trying to hit Byron Franklin, number 88, across the middle. But it just, maybe you'll see it go through Hinkle's arms. Let's see here. Maybe we can see it. Right here. Now watch the ball. It's just going to be thrown right over top of the center. Oh, yeah, there it is. You were right. It was tipped. Just barely got a finger on it, did Hinkle. And that means it'll be field goal time for Norm Johnson. We've got a new holder, Gail Gilbert, who held last year, has replaced easily as the holder for Johnson. And if he makes it, you'll see Gail Gilbert in there holding all the time. 36-yard attempt. No good. hit the right upright he's 0 for 3 and the booze ring through his ears here at the kingdom oh they they should wow so the Seahawks drive all the way down the field and come up empty they cling to a 6 nothing lead potential points today here's Johnson's latest attempt Ehrenberg carries for the Steelers on first down he brings it up to the 25 yard line a four yard game Gaines and Schultz at linebacker. On the tackle as Johnson again walks away 0 for 3. Oh, he's got to have disgust on it. Look, he just turns back and says, I don't have any excuses. Maybe it wasn't the holder as easily was replaced by Gilbert and it still was no good. There's a Steeler shaken up on the play. Dave, uh, as a former player, is it uh, usual to see this many of injuries, uh, slight injuries in the first game of play. Are some of the players maybe lacking in conditioning a little or something? Well, certain players are. Pittsburgh was quite worried about their running backs. Uh, they're for, they're both their running backs. One had knee surgery and the other one had, a, had, a, had an injury with his, I guess, the meninges of his brain. But you shouldn't see this many injuries this early. We'll be back in a moment. Running back Rich Ehrenberg shaking up on this play. He just looks as if he gets twisted around there. You can see how he's kind of twisted in the pile and he went out and he's on the Steeler bench they've already lost uh, Walter Abercrombie for a while with a hit bruise he may be coming back and David Hughes is the only backup they have left Abercrombie is back as Malone goes to the air Lips tries to come back to make the catch it falls incomplete Terry Taylor is right there with him now a shoving match Taylor and Lips 
Schultz comes in to help, and reinforcements from the Pittsburgh bench. And calmer heads prevail. And I think that was a little bit of a frustration on Lewis Lips. He hasn't gotten the ball thrown to him today, and he hasn't come up with a big reception. He's just quite frustrated, and he just gave Terry, uh, excuse me, just gave Terry Taylor, number 20, just a little shove out of frustration. Chuck Knoll has seen his offense sputter all day long. Mark Malone has not had a good day. And, of course, Dave Craig has heard the boos of the crowd here at the Kingdom. So the two quarterbacks that have been plagued by inconsistency throughout their careers, not exactly lighting it up in the opener of 86. Third and six for the Steelers from their own 24. They trail 6 nothing. 9-20 to play third quarter. Incomplete. That one just out of the arms of the intended receiver, John Stallworth. That was a good pass by Malone. Stallworth didn't hold it as Brown put the hit on it. Yes, that's why you want to catch it with your hands and not catch it with your chest. Because when he caught that ball with his chest, at just the precise time when he caught that ball, Dave Brown hit him in the back and knocked it out. Now, you'll see Dave Brown, number 22, come into your picture. But watch Stallworth. Doesn't catch it with his hands. Let's come all the way into the chest. Boom, there's the ball knocked out by Dave Brown. The veteran Stallworth, one of the best receivers in NFL history. Short punt this time. Edmonds lets it bounce. And it gets a good Pittsburgh roll. Newsom got a good roll on that one after coming off with a short punt. So the Seahawks will have a chance to get the offense cranked up again. And, of course, we're coming down to the final weeks of the Major League Baseball season. And NBC Sports will keep you up to date on the pennant races. In the American League East, the Red Sox trying to stave off the rest of the pack. They'll face the Yankees. And in the National League West, the Reds against their old rivals, the Dodgers, as Cincinnati tries to gain ground on the Houston Astros. That's next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time on NBC Sports. 51-yard punt after the good roll for Newsom. And Seattle has it on its own 25 on the first down. All count by Craig. Quick pass complete. Byron Franklin makes the reception, taken out after a gain of eight yards. Harvey Clayton let him have the room underneath, then took him out of bounds after an eight-yard gain. Tying again for the 10-minute ticker. I think there is much change in Miami and San Diego, 26-14. Let's pause briefly now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KING-TV, Channel 5, Seattle. Craig on the handoff. Warner can't get away from the tackler stopped behind the line. Good penetration by Keith Willis from his defensive end spot in the five-year veteran out of Northeastern makes the stop for a minus two on the play. Tom Hammond, Dave Rowe with you from the Kingdom in Seattle where the Seahawks have a 6-0 lead with 8.38 remaining in the third quarter. And it's been the game that the offensive has been really inconsistent. Pittsburgh perhaps more so. Seattle has managed to go up and down the field, but they have no points to show for it. Well, their kicking game has just almost killed them today. If they don't get that one touchdown, they are not even in this ball game. From the shotgun on third and three. Craig complete for the first down. Again, it's Byron Franklin that makes the reception with Merriweather all over him. Help from Chris Sheffield. Six yards on the play and a Seahawk first down. Boy, watch this tackle. You want to see what it's like to get sandwiched. This is what it's like to be a wide receiver. Merriweather gets him from this side and Sheffield from that side. And hello to Byron Franklin. <laughs> There's Rich Ehrenberg on the Steeler bench. He has a separated right shoulder and will not return today. Split backs in the backfield, Williams and Warner. First down play from Craig. Complete on the swing. Williams makes a nice move and comes up just shy of the 45, seven yards on the play. Robin Cole makes the hit. And if, in fact, Rich Ehrenberg does have a separated shoulder, as you indicated, I'll tell you, it's going to be a long time for him to come back because running backs take so much abuse on their shoulders they have got to have the strength in that upper body and you can see they're putting a sling on his shoulder to keep his uh, separation is up in the clavicle area way up on the top of the shoulder and that's where running backs take all the abuse so he may be out for an extended time second down three yards to go from the Seahawks 45 hits to Warner 
corner, stepped out of bounds, just shy of the first down. Mike Merriweather forced him out. And there's David Hughes, who is the lone backup now at running back for Pittsburgh. And of course, uh, formerly was a Seattle Seahawk player. And we have a flag, Tom. It looks like it may go against Seattle. It, I thought it was a holding call on the end of the line. It looked as if uh, someone got tackled on the Steelers' uh, defense. Here's the call from Jerry Seaman. Holding number 32, offense, still second down. John L. Williams is guilty of the hold, and it sets the Seahawks back to a second and 13 situation with the ball on their own 35-yard line. Williams, though, has a lot of talent, a lot of promise. We asked Dave Craig about him yesterday, and Craig was lavish in his praise of the rookie. There's some of that shifting that we see in the Seattle offense. Craig has his man, Williams. A base attacker is driven out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Seven-yard gain. Credit the tackle to Brian Hinkle. Well, we talked about the motion. There's what you see. Everybody coming out of the backfield. Uh, look right there in the center of your screen. Did you see that roll block on the back of Keith? I mean, Gary Dunn? Uh, that could have been a uh, penalty against the Seahawks. I don't know if you can see it again, but you cannot dive on the black. Maybe you can see it right here. Watch Keith, Gary Dunn, number 67 in white. Now watch it. He gets a great move. Now watch the dive on the back of his legs. Ouch. Third and six for Seattle. Pressure. Almost picked off. Eric Williams made a diving attempt at the interception. As Byron Franklin had already gone down, or was it Ray Butler? Butler, I believe, had gone down, and Craig felt the pressure. Oh, he did feel the pressure. Pittsburgh realizes that they have got to get pressure on Dave Craig. They cannot allow him just to sit back there. As good as their defensive backs and linebackers are, they still have to get pressure. They're using a lot of linebacker stunts. Merriweather's coming in there, Hinkle's coming in there, but they have got to get pressure on Dave Craig. Vince Gamash will punt it away for Seattle. There are his stats on the day. Rick Woods is deep for Pittsburgh. Short kick by Gamash, but he gets a good bounce. Picked up by Woods, and he's buried. Not a very good decision by Woods. Well, it, it didn't seem if it, as if it was, Tom, but he had to field that ball. When that ball bounces, it's going inside the 10-yard line. So Pittsburgh backed up. They trail. Since the opening drive of the game, 12 plays, they have gained only 20 yards on the ground, 22 in the air. How much are, are the new faces in the offensive line hampering the Pittsburgh offense? Well, obviously, Mike Webster's a signal caller on the offensive blocking schemes, and he has had a big, big absence of him in there because he calls all the calls. We talked about them. 88 interceptions in the last three years. That is a fantastic statistic. And there's one of the men that plays a vital role, number 22, Dave Brown. He's a senior citizen back there. He's played 12 years. And he played that play, Tom, just like he knew it was going to be thrown to him. I just was amazed to see him step in front. 
Here's the 10 minute ticker as the Raiders move further ahead of the Broncos. Third interception of the day for the Seattle defense. They've also recovered two fumbles. They led the NFL in takeaway giveaway ratio in 1984 were among the leaders last year and again that Chuck Knox trademark coming to the fore in this game. Well if, they, if, they, if this is any indication they'll be leading it after the first week because they have really intercepted the ball today. They picked off fumbles interceptions and they've turned them into points now. Johnson puts the boot to it and Elder fields it at the five. Hip and drop at the 15. John Kaiser Third-year veteran from Arizona down quickly on the coverage after a 10-yard return by Elder. Kaiser, number 54, 6'3", 233 pounds, and downfield in a hurry. This telecast presented by Authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. Tom Allen and Dave Rowe, the Kingdom in Seattle. The Seahawks have just scored on an interception by Dave Brown. They go up 13-0. Pittsburgh again backed up deep in their own territory. Pollard fights up to the 20-yard line, four or five yards on the play as they keep it on the ground after throwing the interception on their last possession, their third of the afternoon. Jeff Bryant made the tackle. And Tom, Mark Malone has to be shell-shocked. In the last two weeks, he has had just two horrible weeks. He started off the preseason. He played most of the preseason. Had not thrown an interception before last week. He threw four last week. And I think he has three this week. David Hughes replaces Pollard in the backfield for the Steelers. He's joined by Walter Abercrombie, who goes in motion. Handoff to Hughes. Good running by Hughes. Brings it up across the 25 to about the 27. A six-yard gain on the play and enough for a Steeler first down. Dave Brown, the quarterback who scored a moment ago, forced up to stop the run. And what teams will do when they get into problems like this, and Pittsburgh obviously has some problems moving the ball on offense, they'll go back to what they, has been successful for them. The running game is, is the least of the problems today. The passing game has almost been non-existent. And Malone has a little more room to operate now with the ball out to the 27 and a first down. Again, they keep it on the ground as Abbott Crombie, the five-year veteran from Baylor, plows ahead with Joe Nash clinging to him to drag him to the turf after a short gain on the play. Mark Malone getting the signal from the sideline. The Pittsburgh offense only 34 yards in passing this afternoon. They have 57 yards from their running game. Second and nine here. the pass give it instead to Abercrombie he's in trouble he's slammed to the turf good strong hit that time by Terry Taylor who's had a good game in the 86 opener wow the, the hardest thing for a cornerback number 20 in the center of your screen there it's a cornerback Terry Taylor the hardest thing to do is to come up when you've got that running back running full blast at you watch Terry Taylor throws his body in there that oh boy watch this hit bam that's quite a hit Four-yard gain for Abercrombie sets up third and five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. On their own 32-yard line, the wave echoing throughout the kingdom. Malone got rid of it just in time, and it's going to be complete to Sweeney. They say no, he was out of bounds, no catch. Terry Tater covering on the play. And Pittsburgh has tried, excuse me, Seattle has, has felt that Terry Taylor is playing just outstanding ball, and Pittsburgh doesn't believe it. They keep on coming back against Terry Taylor. Now watch this here. Both feet have to come in bounds. You can see there, Calvin Sweeney, clearly out of bounds. Not even close. The replay official had an easy time on that yeah, one. Sure did. Fourth down, and Newsom will kick it away to Bobby Joe Edwards. Flag on the play is Edmonds, and another flag goes down. One flag back at the line of scrimmage, and one where Edmonds fielded the ball. And that was a foolish clip on Seattle's party. If Fair caught the ball, and they're going to call a clip against Seattle. Now, against Pittsburgh, they may call man downfield, so it could be offsetting. We've got three flags down on the field. But Seattle obviously clipped way late, and it was a foolish call. 
All right, Jerry Seaman conferring with his fellow officials. That's where he's going to say, he says, okay, now you have a flag, what's yours? Okay, now you got it one, two, what's yours? <laughs> they're saying that they're trying to decide who's going to go all the way back downfield to pick that one up. <laughs> yes. Okay, Jerry, what do you got? In eligible downfield, number 55 offense. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 55 offense. Illegal block during the return, number 50 receiving team. Replay the down. So after all that, they'll replay it. Dennis Winston had two fouls on the same play. They call him Dirt. He lived up to his nickname. Yeah, he was almost a three-time loser on that play. But I saw that, that clip, and it was foolish for Seattle to do that clip, especially on a fair catch. He almost only just kind of touched him in the back, but you can't do that. But I keep on remarking to myself that Harry Newsom just takes a lot of time back there. If somebody puts a lot of rush on him, he could have a problem. He just seems as if he takes like a little bit of like an extra half a second. Edmonds will try it again. He's had two returns, one for 34 yards, one for 11. He'll get a chance on this one from the 20. Got a lane to the outside. Bobby Joe Edmonds with a great return for Seattle. Chris Sheffield, a fellow rookie, makes the stop for Pittsburgh. Tom, they brought, they brought Bobby Joe Edmonds in here from Arkansas. He's 5'11", 186, a great return man. In the NFL, they set up what they call a fence. Now, watch there. You'll see the blue shirts coming in and the white shirts this side of them. There's another one. There's another block. Now, look at all the blue shirts out there. They set up what they call the fence or the wall, and all you want to do is get outside that, and you've got five or six blockers, and Bobby Joe Conrad, Bobby Joe Edmonds did a great job that time. 44-yard return, the second leading returner all time at Arkansas. Only his coach, Ken Hetfield, there had more yardage returning. First down for the Seahawks at the 36 of Pittsburgh. Complete for the first down. Darrell Turner, who scored a touchdown earlier, goes out of bounds as the flags go down. Sheffield forced him out. And the frustration beginning to show now on Pittsburgh. This could be against Sheffield because it looked as if he was out of bounds. Now watch the secondary. You'll see Sheffield's at the top of your screen. And there's what you're going to see 81 Daryl Turner turn out. Now here's the ball. Now the question is, was he going out of bounds? You can see right here, he starts to turn up field. Now watch, he starts to turn up field. Then all of a sudden looks as, I don't know if that's that bad. I don't, I don't think that was too bad. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 41 defense. First down. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't know if I feel that way. Well, Sheffield was whistled for the personal foul. I agree with you. Uh, the man was still in bounds. Aren't you allowed to force him out if he's going to stand in bounds? We might get another look at that, but I just didn't think he was out of bounds. 2.40 remaining third quarter. Seahawks driving. First down at the Steeler 12. They lead 13-0. The right foot of Turner may have been out of bounds. In that case, it would have been a good call. Warner twists and turns and is taken down. Let's watch it again and see if, in fact, he did have his right foot out of bounds. Well, we can't hear the whistle on a replay, and that's a... Now, watch Turner. He's going to do a turnout. Now, when he catches the ball, Sheffield is way off him. Now, Sheffield's going to react back towards the ball. Now, see, he turns right there. I don't know if his right field... He's, his feet are on the green right oh, there. They haven't been hit yet. Oh, now he's out. He's yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Boy, the big eye doesn't lie. That's the camera. Yeah, had his right foot out of bounds when Sheffield hit him. Second and ten. For the Seahawks. Ball at the 12 yard line of Pittsburgh. Craig to the air. Swings it complete to Largent. To the 10 and out of bounds. Sheffield again forced to make the coverage. And a very short gain on the play. Maybe uh, no gain. Well, the interesting thing look at Largent. He's a fullback in this play. He's a tailback that's, in the eye. And that's he? number 80 back there. Now he swings out of the backfield. Craig all of a sudden looks off, picks him up. That was really inter an interesting play to see Steve Largen playing fullback. Clock stops at 153. Seattle third and 10. Leading the Steelers 13-0. The ball at the Pittsburgh 12-yard line. Here's the shotgun formation. Double wide receivers to either side. Craig, as flags go down, scrambles, dives forward to the five, and looked like
back. Seattle was offside. They had a man that started in motion and then cut up too early. And did you see that time, Steve? Craig, uh, Craig slid in with his feet. Now, see, when he slides in his feet, he's not supposed to be hit. But the last minute, he tried to hook slide. But we're going to have a uh, flag against Seattle. I think it was Daryl Turner that was called for illegal motion. Illegal motion, number 81 offense, still third down. Here is Turner in motion. He'll cut up too soon. Was beyond the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. Penalties for the day. The Seahawks have been the more penalized team. They have a 13-0 lead with a minute 37 showing on the clock for the third quarter. And a third and 15 now for Seattle. The reception takes it down to about the six or seven yard line. Rick Woods, after an 11 yard gain, stops Butler. And the 10 minute ticker again updates us. Denver's come back. The Raiders lead that one by a point. Fourth down coming up for the Seahawks, and this has been an adventure all day long. Norm Johnson, who is 0 for 3 in the field goal department, 1 for 2 in extra points, will try the field goal. It'll be about a 25-yard attempt. Officially from 24 yards, Norm Johnson finally hits the field goal in his fourth try of the afternoon. And if he had missed that one, he would have come over here on Pittsburgh's side. You can see how much happier a kicker is when he makes it. He wants to get to he wants to get his hand in there. There's the hold, a good hold. Now they, as you said, they brought in the backup quarterback. Now watch right here. He gets a hug. And then he runs over the sideline and everybody wants to congratulate him, puts his hand in the huddle. And they much. wouldn't get within five feet of him earlier in the game <laughs> oh, after boy. he missed his first three. He's like Lindberger cheese when he misses it. <laughs> 40 ticks of the clock remaining for the third quarter. Seattle extends its lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Next Sunday, here's our lineup of NFL games on NBC Sports. You see San Diego at the Giants, the Raiders at Washington, the Bills invade Riverfront, and Cleveland in the Astrodome against the Oilers. And our 4 o'clock games next week, 4 o'clock Eastern, will find Kansas City at Seattle. They'll play here in the Kingdom in Indianapolis against Miami. Norm Johnson will kick it away, and Donnie Elder again is deep for the Steelers. Elder into the end zone. Up the middle, and gets it just shy of the 25-yard line. Good return by Elder, 25 yards officially, as the clock stops with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Apologize to some of those of you viewers who are experiencing some lines to the video portion of the game, and Working hard to try to get the uh, Lions eliminated from the picture. In the meantime, please bear with us, and thanks for your understanding. If you're a Seattle fan, you probably don't mind. If you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, it's been a long afternoon thus far. Lions on the screen and all. On the 24, Pittsburgh will put it in play. Malone completes it. He bobbled it, really couldn't get his feet under him, and it's taken down for no gain on the play. And he hit that, they hit that hip that he had bruised earlier in the game, and the, the running backs of the Steelers have really taken punishment today. Well, they certainly have, Tom. You just get the feeling that Malone needs to get something. You can watch it. Maybe you can see him go back. He's jogging back there. He doesn't feel too bad. You'll see it. Abercrombie, as he comes out here, he does, in fact, fall on that hip. But the point I was going to make is that right now Malone is just dumping these passes off. He's trying to get a little bit more confidence. They are almost shell-shocked on offense in, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's the end of the third quarter of play here at the King Dome in Seattle. At the end of the third quarter, the score, the Seahawks 16, the Steelers nothing. We'll be back. Throw from the King Dome, ready to start the fourth quarter. Second and 10 for the Steelers from the 24-yard line. Seattle leads 16-0. We apologize for the quality of the picture again. We're working hard to get rid of those lines that you may be seeing on your screen. Abercrombie gets the call, takes it up shy of the 30. Gary Justin, Greg Gaines combining for the stop. Well, that's John Kolb, who's the 
He's one of the line coaches and he has just been overtelling his defense. We've got to get more pressure on the passer. We're just not getting getting enough time. You can see him coming back over towards the bench and there's all his defensive linemen standing there and he's saying listen we've got to get to that pass. We can't allow our, our secondary to be out there trying to cover that ball. Seattle with a big edge in the total yards department especially in passing yardage as well. Here's a pass behind the intended receiver Warren Sites. He was open to flag down. Now this may be an interesting call because this looked almost as if it was a pick play by Calvin Sweeney. So it may be in fact offensive interference. No it's not. They're going to call it against Seattle but it looked as if it was involving Calvin Sweeney but boy Pittsburgh just can't pass up anything. I mean they <laughs> they just haven't had a pass. They had 16 yards at the end of the first half. And they've got 16 yards passing at the end of the third quarter. So that I think that my math doesn't phase me or fail me. I should Illegal say that contact, means that number 22 they haven't defense, had a yard. First down. Illegal contact on the part of Dave Brown of Seattle. And that gives the Pittsburgh a first down. And they've been few and far between. They had a first down in the second quarter. They had a first down in the third quarter. And now they begin the fourth quarter with one of those rare first downs. Picture is completely gone now. We'll try to describe the action for you. Here are the Steelers. They give it to Pollard. Dodges one tackler at the 35. Comes forward to about the 37, where he's snowed under by a host of Seattle defenders, led by Eugene Robinson and Greg Gaines. Only a two-yard gain on the play. And one of the things that Pollard doesn't do as well as some of the other backs is that great cutback speed. He doesn't have the Kurt Warner type of cutback speed, so he's not going to make a big yardage play cutting back against the grain. He has got to have power going straight to the hole, ripping up through the hole and bursting through and making 8 10 yards ball at the Pittsburgh 38 yard line second and seven for the Steelers split backs in the backfield wide receivers to other side Malone collides with a man he handed the ball to Hughes Hughes picks it up on the first bounce and then is gang tackled by the Seattle defense a missed timing play between Hughes the backup running back and his quarterback Mark Malone and David Hughes has to be the least per last person to think he was even going to be a factor today he hasn't had a lot of a playing experience with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers so he in fact is in new in there he's fresh in there he's just trying to get all the plays down and to compound the problem he's playing against his former teammates third down eight yards to go for Pittsburgh from the 37 yard line clock ticking down for the 13 minute mark in the final quarter and Seattle leading 16 nothing Malone under center for this third down play one set back behind him he's back to pass flags fly Malone downfield has a man wide open complete to Stallworth for first down yardage but a flag in the Pittsburgh backfield and Jacob Green is telling him come on back come on back because he was holding me and it is a holding call against Pittsburgh which will nullify a 20 yard gain and a Steeler first down it's been a long afternoon for that Pittsburgh offensive unit illegal motion number 66 offense still third down penalty called against Mark Beaning first year player out of Nebraska who is starting his first game today Beaning is good against the run but has trouble in pass blocking he's from Nebraska they say the strongest player ever in Nebraska football history our 10 minute ticker will give it to you radio style now Chicago beat Cleveland 41 31 Washington over the Eagles 41 14 the Rams bested St. Louis 16 10 those are all final scores we'll have more in a moment third down 13 for the Steelers Malone retreats to pass sends it for the sideline way overshoots his intended receiver John Stallworth he was over Stallworth's head by about five yards Dave Brown was defending on the play but the pass not even close more scores now Houston big win over Green Bay 31 13 and Detroit 13 10 winner over Minnesota other final scores San Francisco 31 7 beating Tampa Bay Atlanta scored 31 points downing New Orleans 31 10 Games in progress in the third quarter. The Raiders lead the Broncos 36-28. Buffalo 17, the Jets 14. Upset of the making in the fourth quarter. Quick block by Seattle. It's blocked by Taylor. He picks it up on the bounce. He's heading for the end zone. And he scores. No, he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the one-yard line. Terry Taylor blocked the punt it up on the first hop set sail down the sideline and stopped just short of the goal line. 
Well, how many times did I tell you that Harry Newsom takes a little bit too much time? This time Seattle puts pressure on him. Terry Taylor comes all the way to the outside, knocks the ball down, runs all the way over to his bench side, scoops the ball up on about the 16, 17 yard line and steps out of bounds. The replay shows that he stepped out of bounds. We know you can't see it at home, but he had a foot out of bounds as he scooped up the ball. So put it back on the Steeler 18 yard line. First down for the Seahawks after the block punt. High formation in the backfield. Williams, the fullback. Warner, the tailback, gets the handoff from Trent. Stumbles forward inside the 15, down to about the 12-yard line. Tom, one of the telltale signs of a, of a game getting weary is when your defense is always on the field. Your defensive philosophy is you play three plays and you get out of there. Today, Pittsburgh's offense has played three plays and gotten out of there. Their defense has been on the field the entire time. We'll continue our final scores radio live from the 10 minute ticker. New England leads Indianapolis 20 to 3 in the fourth quarter. Kansas City 21 7 over Cincinnati. And here, Seattle 16 0 over Pittsburgh. Those are all fourth quarter scores. Second and five, Seattle ball on the 13. Craig hands it off to Warner. Hit, bounces off one tackler, and is stopped shy of the 10 yard line as Keith Willis, the defensive end, holds on for dear life and drags him to the turf. Sweeney couldn't hold it. Uh, Mark Malone hasn't thrown a ball downfield over 15 yards in at least the last two quarters. Anytime he's gone long, the defensive secondary of Seattle has read his eyes so well and reacted so well. And it started back with Dave Brown intercepted that play. It looked as if he almost knew the exact play that was going to be. So I think Mark Malone's not looking off the wide receivers enough, and he's just obviously having a rough day. Harry Newsom in punt formation. Member of Bobby Joe Edmonds returned his last punt 44 yards. Edmonds retreats to the 20. Juking and not able to get away from the Pittsburgh coverage that time. David Little led the coverage downfield. 50 yard, 54 yard punt. The return by Edmonds, 11 yards. We'll be right back. Here's the NBC Sports 10 minute ticker exclusively on the NBC Sports NFL coverage. That Raider Denver game has been going back and forth the whole way, and the Raiders continue to maintain an edge. It was only one point a few moments ago. Now it's up to 36 28. And don't you know, Don Cricky and Bob Trump are enjoying that game in Denver. Wind up with a score here at the Kingdom with 9.35 to play. The Seahawks have a first and 10 from their own 32 with a 23 0 lead. John L. Williams plows straight ahead with Merriweather and Gerald Williams wrapped around him. No gain on the play. Brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. By Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Tom Evan and Dave Rowe, the King Dome in Seattle. 8.51 remaining in the game. The Seahawks have blown it open here in the fourth quarter. They lead Pittsburgh 23-0. The last time the Steelers were shut out back on December 12, 1982 at Buffalo. Kurt Warner racked up right at the line of scrimmage by Keith Gary. It's a minus three on the play for Warner. 
As the Pittsburgh defense continues to play pretty well, but the offense has really struggled. Wow, did Keith Gary, number 92, come in there? He was on a stunt, and he twisted underneath the defensive tackle, and he just met Kurt Warner head on the head. That was really quite a hit for him. Bobby Joe Edmonds has set a Seattle record for punt returns, four for 101 yards today. This time it's Rick Woods' turn for Pittsburgh, and he calls for the fair catch on the punt by Gamach, which covered 37 yards. So the Pittsburgh offense trots back out of the field, and we'll take a break with the Seahawks blanking the Steelers 23 zip. Seen two of the best coaches in the business today, but this may be a game that Chuck Noll wants to forget because it's been a frustrating day for his offense. Well, if you can imagine, they have not been shut out in what 50. Four years in their first game. He is just, you, his teeth are grinding. I can hear him up here. Steelers have a first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. 23 0 Seattle. Screen pass. Abercrombie bobbled and dropped it. Well, that's not Malone's fault. That time Abercrombie just dropped the pass, and Malone has seen everything go wrong today. You know, the thing that's so hard for Mark Malone is that you talked about it. He's lived in the shadow of Terry Bradshaw, and, and he was a legend, of course, in Pittsburgh, and now he's had to come in and try to fill his shoes, and he's such a good fella. I mean, he's, he's had a rough day. Look at those stats, 7 for 24, 34 yards. But they said that he became a leader here when he fought back from that knee surgery, and he has had such an up-and-down career. You just hate to see that for a guy as, as nice as he is. Second and 10. Keep it on the ground this time with about the same success. That was Sites who carried the ball. Warren Sites, who was the backup tight end, but with the injuries to the running back, has been switched to running back in a reserve role today. In fact, uh, spent most of training camp as a reserve running back and uh, is versatile, both at tight end and running back. In fact, uh, was a quarterback at Missouri until his senior year. Well, one of the things, Tom, that happens when a game gets apart like this, 23 to nothing, is that the entire philosophy of the defense changes. You just rush the quarterback. You don't worry about anything. Third and ten. Malone with a wounded duck complete to Stallworth. Into Seahawk territory at the 49-yard line. And a Steeler first down. The veteran Stallworth, one of the best in the business, beat Kerry Justin for 23 yards. And this is, you'll see the secondary now. Stallworth is going to be down to the right of your screen at the bottom. But the interesting thing about this is you see the secondary dropping back, playing two deep zone and four short. But the pass took so long to get there. Stallworth, there was no timing on the play. Stallworth just turned around and now watch how long this pass takes. You'll see Stallworth's not running. He's just. Take a break with the Seahawks blanking the Steelers 23 zip. Seen two of the best coaches in the business today, but this may be a game that Chuck Noll wants to forget because it's been a frustrating day for his offense. Well, if you can imagine, they have not been shut out in, what, 54 years in their first game? He is just, you, his teeth are grinding. I can hear him up here. Steelers have a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. 23 nothing Seattle. Screen pass. Abercrombie bobbled and dropped it. Well, that's not Malone's fault. That time Abercrombie just dropped the pass, and Malone has seen everything go wrong today. You know, the thing that's so hard for Mark Malone is that you talked about it. He's lived in the shadow of Terry Bradshaw, and, and he was a legend, of course, in Pittsburgh, and now he's had to come in and try to fill his shoes, and he's such a good fella. I mean, he's, he's had a rough day. Look at those stats, 7 for 24, 34 yards. But they said that he became a leader here when he fought back from that knee surgery, and he has had such an up-and-down career. You just hate to see that for a guy as, as nice as he is. Second and 10. Keep it on the ground this time with about the same success. That was Sites who carried the ball. Warren Sites, who was the backup tight end, but with the injuries to the running back, has been switched to running back in a reserve role today. In fact, uh, spent most of training camp as a reserve running back and uh, is versatile, both at tight end and running back. In fact, uh, was a quarterback at Missouri until his senior year. Well, one of the things, Tom, that happens when a game gets apart like this, 23 to nothing, is that the entire philosophy of the defense changes. You just rush the quarterback. You don't worry about anything. Third and ten. Malone with a wounded duck complete to Stallworth. Into Seahawk territory at the 49-yard line. And a Steeler first down. The veteran Stallworth, one of the best in the business, beat Kerry Justin for 23 yards. And this is, you'll see the secondary now. Stallworth is going to be down to the right of your screen at the bottom. But the interesting thing about this is you see the secondary dropping back, playing two deep zone and four short. 
But the pass took so long to get there. Stallworth, there was no timing on the play. Stallworth just turned around and now watch how long this pass takes. You'll see Stallworth's not running. He's just turned around, just almost standing there waiting for the ball. Four catches for 41 yards for Stallworth today. Abercrombie stopped at the 45. Three or four yard gain on the play. We'll give him five actually by the time they unstack them with Jacob Green down at the bottom of the pile for Seattle. You know, one of the things, Tom, that's been interesting today to watch is, of course, this offensive line. We talked about all the illnesses and the, the people out. Reemster is out. He was supposed to start. Rasmussen moves up. Tunch Elkin is out. Benning starts. Uh, just so many different. Mike Webster's out. Turk starts. And they just have not had the continuity. That's not to say that they're great, not great players, but they have not had that offensive continuity in there at all. Malone fires a strike that time. Complete to Hughes out of the backfield. He takes it inside the 25 down to about the 22 yard line before Eugene Robinson puts the hit on him. 22 yard gain to Hughes. And he's doubled his passing outfit, his output so far with the last two plays. Hughes catches it in the seam. He turns upfield, and all of a sudden his teammates say, Hey, wait a minute, that's David Hughes. He played here just last week. <laughs> Takes it down to the 22-yard line. The clock ticking away at 5.45. Seattle in front, 23-0. First scoring threat, really, for the Steelers today. Their best drive previously was a 12-yard drive off the opening kickoff. Malone, plenty of time. Now the coverage breaks down as the flag flies. Almost intercepted. Robinson couldn't handle it. It falls incomplete, intended for Sweeney. And Tom, where that flag is thrown, it's almost always offensive holding. But this time, it may be an illegal head slap. I looked over there, and I saw Dan Turk was pointing against Seattle. So they may have called an illegal head slap here. That's, That's like, an interesting call. Will indeed go against the Seahawks. Illegal use of hands to the face, number 77 defense, first down. That's Jeff Bryant, who has whistled for the infraction. Bryant playing with sort of a bum ankle, taped up very heavily. And that time... Uh, the young man out of Clemson was called for the foul. Yeah. Well, you see it in the center there. Now watch. See the oh, hand right is, there yeah. he has? His left hand is on the face mask of number 60. That's Randy Rasmussen, and that's what the referee saw. There's the end of the play. But the penalty gives Pittsburgh a first down at the 17 of Seattle. Here's the reverse. Malone trying to block as Lips carries it inside the 10. Greg Gaines upended him. Malone was out there in front running interference, an eight-yard gain, and I think he finally thought better of trying to block somebody, though. <laughs> yeah, he kind of finally just, well, he was trying. you got to give him an A for effort here. You'll see Mark Malone, number 16, is a quarterback. Now, he's going to try to get a block. Well, he just, maybe he's not going to try to get a block. <laughs> he was running interference, is that right. what they call? He got in the way, anyway. <laughs> Second and two from the Seahawk nine-yard line as the Steelers try to get on the board. And the Seahawks try to preserve their setup. Takes the pass, given instead to Abercrombie. He's tripped up, tries to keep his feet forward, and is stopped shy of the first down by Dave Brown. Here's our 10-minute ticker again, again, as the Raiders. 36-31 over the Denver Broncos. What that's a game. A, that's wow. a real defensive struggle up there, isn't it? 67 points scored. Look how many points San Diego has scored oh, against wow. Miami. 68. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to see those scores that the NFL has always wanted more offense, and I believe they're getting it this year. Look at the amount of scores. 23, 21, 47, 30. Less than four minutes to play. Steelers with a third and one. Tight formation. Malone will pass. And mistimed on the pattern intended for Ouija Thompson. Well, it's just thrown just out of the arm reach. This is a play where he has to, you see at the top, that's Ouija Thompson at the top, number 87. Now he's to turn out. Now he just gets bumped off the line by Dave Brown, and he doesn't get that timing, and they're off just the step on just about every play. So on fourth and one, and down 23 nothing, Pittsburgh will go for it. Ball is at the Seahawk eight. Fans want to shut up. Malone rolls. 
He's going to keep it. Listen to the crowd. Kenny Easley and Keith Butler come up to stop Mark Malone. Abercrombie was out front. Let's watch it again. You'll see here Abercrombie's out in there, number 30, Pollard. And all of a sudden, he just puts the ball down, and he has to make that orange flag. You can see the defense. They don't think he's made it. Of course, they're going to come across and measure it. But he sees that flag. That flag's the marker where he has to get to. He decides at the last minute here, I'm going to just pull it down. And wow, does Keith Butler come in there and make a great play, 53. Like Bulldog in his steer as he took him down by the head, and it's that much short of the first down. And the ball will go over to Seattle, and they still have their shutout. Three forty two remaining on the clock for the fourth quarter. That's the score. The Seahawks in command twenty three nothing. Was not a pleasant man to be around when you're down twenty three nothing. Nobody gets near him. Nobody's even coming close to him. First down for the Seahawks from their own eight. Kurt Warner threading his way through traffic. Gets Warner out of bounds, or he was off to the races. How do you assess Warner's performance today? Is the knee injury and the thought of it a thing of the past? I think right now everybody in Seattle is saying what knee injury. We talked about how hard he worked to come back. That's not a man running right there with a knee injury. He is running stride for stride just like the first day he came out and started playing football. He is running just fantastic. He's got over 100 yards rushing, and of course that's the measure mark they always talked about. And they're retiring to the sideline there. He's going out of the game now. And you hear the ovation from the crowd. That one covered 31 yards and Warner over 100. 114 on the day, as you saw. So the Seahawks have that tough schedule underway successfully against the Steelers here this afternoon. John L. Williams, he tries the outside, and he finds some success. Dennis Winston credited for the tackle against the sideline. Williams gets 11 yards. And Tom, I can just look at the defensive players, the way they're walking back to the huddle there. They're obviously have taken a lot of wind out of their sails today. They came and played such a hard first half. They got no points. That really had to take a lot of steam out of them. Their offense gave up the ball a couple times on interceptions. They got they stopped them. They got no points. And finally, it's just been such a disheartening day for such a proud team as the Pittsburgh Steelers. First down for the Seahawks at midfield. Williams, maybe a yard. Brian Hinkle with another tackle. Hinkle 6'2", 220, five years out of Oregon. And we've been singing his praises all day, along with Merriweather, two of the best outside backers in the game. Well, there's no quit in this Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not trying to imply that there's no quit in this Pittsburgh Steelers team as we see mom's watching. <laughs> but the thing that I want to say is also is that their division that Pittsburgh plays in, you can win with about a nine and seven record. Remember last year, the record that won that division was what, nine and seven last year, I believe, won that division. So there's always a possibility. Clock is on the move. It shows two minutes and 45 seconds right now. Randall Morris. And a 20. Cuts back. Touchdown. and just cuts, makes a nice cut right back there under Donnie Shell. Two or three Steelers dive out for him, but boy, when it's going bad against you, it just goes bad. It was a 49-yard touchdown run. His first rush of the day, he'd been the leading rusher for the Seahawks in preseason. This is a nice run right down the sideline, the three-year veteran from Tennessee. Johnson tries the extra point. Remember, he missed his first one today. This one dead center. What a little icing on the cake as Randall Morris gets his name in the opening day record books and the Seahawks are pouring it on the Steelers with 2.35 remaining in the game. Seattle 30, 
And Pittsburgh nothing. Well now comes the question do you try your second team quarterback or do you just go let Mark Malone sweat it out because he's going to have good days and he's going to have bad days. This is obviously one of his poorer days. Well next Saturday on NBC Sports the world's best track and field athletes meet in Rome to compete in the IAAF Grand Prix Finals. Olympic gold medalists Edwin Moses and Evelyn Ashford had a top list of entries competing in 17 events. Join us next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern 3 o'clock Pacific time for NBC Sports coverage of the IAAF Grand Prix Finals. Well you're taking a look. That's Scott Campbell, the backup quarterback to Mark Malone. He's a three-year veteran from Purdue. There are his figures last year. And after Seattle kicks off, perhaps he'll get the call from Chuck Knoll. Well, he should get the call because right now the game is obviously out of reach with two minutes, a little bit over two minutes and 30 seconds left. And you never know what's going to happen in this situation. It's a good time to get your younger quarterback in there, let him get a little bit of experience. Johnson boots it. Be taken by Elder. Across the 20 to about the 21 or 22, where Fred Young, the excellent special teams player, makes another tackle. 14 yard return. Mark Malone through for the day. Oh boy, it's been a tough day for him. <laughs> so Scott Campbell gets a chance with 2.25 remaining. that have just joined us. Seattle and Pittsburgh still in progress here with Seattle leading 30 to nothing. Invite you to stay with us for the final 224 of the game. Seitz gets the call on the carry and is slammed down hard on the tackle. And now with our exclusive NBC Sports special ticker, let's recap the day's activities opening weekend of the NFL season. AT&T, the right choice. In their last regular season game, the Patriots lead the Bengals by four. With just two minutes remaining, New England has a fourth down and one at the Bengal 42. Should the Patriots go for it to try to maintain possession or play it safe and punt, what would you do? With nine completions and 27 attempts, only 79 yards, and threw three interceptions. And the Steelers on the verge of being shut out for the first time since December 1982. Total yardage on the day, a big advantage for the Seahawks. And Tom, if the Seahawks don't have all their problems in the kicking game, it can be much worse because they gave up 10 points, missing an extra point and three close in field goals. Scott Campbell and quarterback for the Steelers retreats for his first pass. Has plenty of time and floats it out of bounds, way off the mark of the intended receiver Jesse Britt. There's Dave Brown who was covering on the play. Brown picked off a pass for a touchdown today and moved within one of Donnie Shell and the Steelers as the active leader in the National Football League in interceptions. His 46th coming today. When I watched down on the sideline I was earlier before the game Dave Brown and Donnie Shell were there together and Donnie was saying Dave was saying oh he's much older than I am and Donnie said you're crazy I'm not older than you. So they're good friends too. Well Shell is the oldest in his position in the league and Brown is the oldest at a quarterback spot so it's a toss up. Warren Sites the intended receiver as Campbell's pass comes short. Brown and Hunter were there. Brown's 33 years old the oldest starting quarterback quarterback in the NFL and at 34 Donnie Shell the oldest starting safety in the National Football League. And for Seattle, we may see a backup quarterback in this situation, too. They obviously don't want to get Dave Craig hurt with the outstanding game he had. And you never know. Bobby Joe Edmonds will receive Newsom's punt. He's already set a record with 101 yards in returns today. Takes that one on a fair catch. 
50 yard punt and no return on the fair catch and we will see the backup quarterback Gail Gilbert enter the game for Seattle Gilbert 6 3 206 pounds two years out of the University of California hurt his arm in preseason and that's why Easley began the game as the holder on field goals and extra points but Gilbert came in after Easley muffed a snap on an extra point and now Gilbert he is in the game, and there's the third quarterback on the Seahawk roster, Sean Salisbury, the rookie out of Southern Cal. He was so good in preseason that Chuck Knox couldn't let him go and kept three quarterbacks. Randall Morris, who carried for a touchdown on his only other possession of the day, gets four yards on that one. Here. Robin Cole on the inside, still playing tough. I was going to say about Salisbury, we, we saw him on the sideline. He was a kid that came in. He couldn't even make his college team. He didn't play well for, for his college, and he, he wasn't drafted. He just came in here. Just He was kind of a wild and crazy guy. He just electrified this crowd here this preseason. Had just an outstanding preseason. Then all of a sudden, saw the real light and said, I'm going to be a third backup quarterback. Approaching the one-minute mark here. The Seahawks missed some opportunities early, but with that opportunistic as ever defense working in the second half, have blown the game wide open. Randall Morris again takes it to the 40-yard line as we come inside one minute. That one good for eight yards. Morris is going to have quite an average. Now that's why they had to keep Sean Salisbury. Look at those completion records. 35 for 64. That's great. Of course, now he wasn't playing against the number one defenses in this league. He was playing in preseason, but as you said, he forced Chuck Knox into keeping him. Now 30 seconds remaining in the game. That's the Seahawks sideline where Chuck Knox in his 13 years as an NFL head coach is about to win his 121st game. And Chuck Knoll on the verge of being shut out here. The Steelers have not been shut out in their opening game for 54 years before today. Knox waves to Knoll, two of the best in the business, squaring off at the King Dome today. And Knox will leave the field victorious. It'll be a long ride back to Pittsburgh for Chuck Knoll and his team. Games in the books, it's over. And Seattle has blanked Pittsburgh 30 to nothing. We'll be back to the Kingdom for some final comments in just a moment. Seahawks have begun.